Welcome back to A Corporate Time. Now, this is uh, super impressive. We're doing this on the fly. He said my name one time, and I'm freaking out a little bit, but I'm going to try to make it through this. On the line with us right now, and you have the opportunity to see him with special guest Pablo Cruz, who I love as well. Firefall, who I love as well. You can see him April 18th at the Florida Theater in Jacksonville, April 19th at Ruth Eckerd Hall in Clearwater. On the line with us right now, I am sweating, Tom. Don Felder's on the line. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful, warm, sunny, blue sky California day. And the world is beautiful. I'm on the phone with a great radio station, too. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, you've done so much of this. You've done this for, I mean, I don't even know. I can't even put a, a, a number on how long you have been doing media for being one of the greatest guitar players or songwriters or singer-songwriters that, that we've had the ability to listen to. Is it true, and this is a strange question, did you get your first guitar trading it for firecrackers? Is that true? <laughs> Yes, I traded a handful of cherry bombs to the kid across the street who had a guitar on the top of his closet. And uh, my brother and I were blowing off cherry bombs, and he came running over and wanted some. And I said, well, I'll give you a handful of these cherry bombs for that guitar. Because we literally, I was dirt poor, living on a dirt road, raised in pretty much right next door to destitute poverty and just outside Gainesville, Florida. Yeah, yeah. He ran over, got the guitar, came back. I gave him the cherry bombs. Ten minutes later, all those cherry bombs were gone, but I had a guitar. Yeah, I was driving in my car this morning, and I was, like, doing research because we knew you were calling in, and I freaked out because, honestly, Don, there's nothing more rock and roll than trading weapons for <laughs> guitar. Like, you were, like, it's, 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 a very, it's very rock and roll to say I traded firecrackers for this guitar, and then you went on to, can I say this? Is it, is it correct to say that you are, that you wrote, like, the greatest album of the 20th century? Isn't that a real thing? Well, I don't know about... Or greatest selling, well, I should say. Greatest selling? I, I, I didn't write it. Uh, it was the Eagles' first greatest hit that went on to be the biggest selling album of the 20th century. And I was absolutely just knocked off of my feet yeah. when I heard that because I thought about the Rolling Stones and Elvis Presley and the Beatles and all the people that came out back in that previous century and we had outsold them all i was just uh, it was i just, i was just dumbfounded it's incredible it. i mean that's a well, huge number well don i i heard you tell a story about uh riding hotel california and how you didn't think it was going to be as big of a hit as it was well, like because a, of radio yeah, play. And like AM radio, in their story about somebody wanted it to be the single for AM, and you were against that, right? Yeah, you know, in the 70s, AM radio would only play songs that were three minutes to three minutes and 30 seconds max. You had them from the needle drop, which everybody used to play records. You had to drop the needle on it. So the singing started couldn't be longer than 30 seconds. The whole thing could be three minutes to three thirty seconds. It had to be a danceable song or kind of a wet, drippy ballad. Hotel California was none of that. It was six and a half minutes long. It was a minute before the vocal started. In the middle, it breaks down. You can't really dance to it. And then at the end, there's a two-minute guitar solo. It, to me, it was the wrong format for AM radio. I thought it was an FM cut, if anybody knows what FM radio is these days. Right, anyway, I know, um, right, yeah. I, 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 I I, and I have never been so happy to have been so long, so wrong in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet. Have you even tried to comprehend how many people have heard Hotel California? Like, yeah. because I or just your music in general. I mean, I don't think there's a personal. Well, I mean, obviously babies, but they don't count. <laughs> but I mean, like you know, I mean, is it hard to wrap your head around that? Yeah, you know, I guess the first time I really got a view of that was I played a private show for the United Nations in New York City. And there were about 500 heads of states and presidents and, you know, representatives from all over the world, all speak different languages. Typically, if you watch uh, the UN, they all wear ear cups with their translator translating to them. So I go on stage and I play at Hotel California and everybody in the place is singing along. 
to the whole song. Wow. It didn't matter what language they grew up in. They knew that song. And I was just, oh, my God. I didn't realize the global reach that song had uh, actually been able to accomplish. It was just mind-blowing to me. He, you know, your, your, uh, your friend, uh, Bernie Leiden, who also part of the Eagles at the time, I, I was reading an article that said at, at one time you guys were, you know, you'd, you'd gotten done with heavy touring, you'd gotten done with an amazing record, and you were on the peak, you're literally killing it, and, you know, you guys were having a talk, you and Bernie, and Bernie says to you about how, you, you know, he's thinking about taking some time off and, like, relaxing more, and, and do you really feel like maybe had, had everybody taken that time? that you guys could have maybe, you know, in, in, like made it together, like the original guys, the, in, you know. Longer. Longer? Yeah. Do you think that is something maybe you could have accomplished? And because, like, I, it was really impactful to me and Tom reading you talking about, like, meditation, taking time for yourself. Work-life balance. Yeah, the work-life balance of, of that is, yeah. Could you go into maybe a little bit of, of, about that? Well, yeah, I mean, back at that time, we had really reached a plateau with uh, the record before, which was on the border, and we were in the middle of making one of these nights, and we had a tour lined up that we were going right from the studio, right on the road to tour for a year, year and a half, and and it was hard to, to tour back then. It wasn't all limos and private jets, a lot of it was rent-a-cars and, and, you know, holiday in hotels yeah. and that sort of stuff. Uh, Bernie was really wise in that he was very health-oriented, health-conscious. And he believed that if we had taken two or three months and just gone to Hawaii and gotten some sun and stopped living at that pace, we could have recharged and been refreshed when we got back together. But Don and Glenn, they were just determined to push this thing on uphill. We can't stop. we got to keep going. we got to strike while the iron's hot. And literally, Bernie walked out of the studio and went to the airport and got on a plane and went to Hawaii and wow. left us going, uh, uh, what's going on? And he thought, <laughs> I think at that time, and I love Bernie. We were in a high school band together. Yeah. You know, he actually replaced those Stephen Stills in this little band that we had. Was, the, con fact, was the Continentals? Was what was that band? The con was it the Continentals? Or? It, it was originally the Continentals, and then once Bernie joined, we changed it to the Mondi Quintet, which sounded much more English, because yeah. it was about <laughs> 1965 where we did that, right? That's funny. So, uh, I, I thought it, you were anyway, going for British. I, I, I think the Rolling Stones have the right idea, and you too, where they go out and work and do a world tour, and then they take two or three years off and write some new songs and enjoy life and kind of pace themselves. And life, you know, there are people that work to live, and then there are some people that live to work. I love what I do. I love playing music. That's why I do it. I don't need to make another dime for the rest of my life. I just love to go out and play music, make people happy, and see that that enthusiasm. I have one of the greatest bands I think I've ever put together. These players are not your typical local sidemen. I have been very, very careful about the people I have in my band because to go out and play these classic songs, they have to come off at the absolute peak of perfection. We sound great. I've got people that have played. I, I've got had people. Let me just run through some of the people sure. that these guys have played with. Uh, some of these musicians have played with Chicago, played with Keith Urban and Carrie Underwood, played with Adam Lambert from Queen, yeah. played with Kid Rock and Rascal Flatts and, and Aerosmith. I mean, it. It's amazing. Peter Frampton, the, the list of characters and people in the business that these, my band musicians have played with, toured with, recorded with, they're really the absolute creme de la creme. When we finish playing our last four or five songs, everybody's up on their feet dancing or rocking to songs like Take It Easy and Life in the Fast Lane and Heartache Tonight and Hotel and everybody's got their phone out. We're just having a great party and that that is so much fun for me to be able to do and have everybody enjoy it and appreciate it. That's why I do it because I love to make. And you can happy. hear it, like you're making me excited about it. Like and like you've got such a, <laughs> such a good demeanor. And like, do you still meditate? Do you still take time for yourself? To... Uh, I try to. Uh, it's kind of hard sometimes when you wake up in a hotel and there's traffic going on outside. But I I, I try to get in a meditation somewhere during the day, at least for 15 minutes. Sure, that's awesome. Day. Don, I'm curious because with uh, just your bandmates and the people they've played with, 
and with your career uh, and the people you've known, uh, your neighbors with Slash, uh, you know, and then your daughters married into the Jenner family. Yeah. Could you pick up the phone and get a hold of any celebrity in the world? I through, think you could. Through like two or three steps, like someone you know knows everybody, correct? <laughs> well, pretty much so. I just, having been in the business for as long as I have, I've done a lot of just made a lot of great friends that are also musicians. And uh, I'm very selective about who I have play in my band. I'm also very selective about who I befriend. Uh, sure. You know, a friendship has to be a two-way street, in my opinion, or else it's, it's just an acquaintance. So when I pick up the phone and call Peter Panton, uh, P- Peter and I went out and did a bunch of shows together. He asked me to induct him into the Musicians Hall of Fame in Nashville. And then the next year, they wanted me to be inducted. And I said, they asked me who I wanted to have induct me. I said, I guess I'll call Peter. He owes me one on that. So, <laughs> um, it's just, you know, I, I, I can pick up the phone and, and call just about anybody that's that i have met in the in the past and we've had a good time with and are good friends you know well, you, uh, nick fleet with us you have i ran a... into him in a restaurant like uh, three weeks ago and i hadn't seen him for a few years and we had a minute to just catch up and it, it was just fun to, to see these people from the 70s 80s 90s and into the new decade here uh and be able to have have good friends well we might as well fire off one more did it really happen did you teach tom petty how to play guitar yeah i used to for extra money i didn't actually get paid every guitar lesson that i taught there in this little music store i got a credit of ten dollars so I was able to use my credit to build up and buy a guitar or trade in an old amp and get a newer amp or something like that. And one day, this kind of blonde-headed, scraggly, buck-toothed, scrawny-looking kid comes walking in, just had to have his shag hair and yeah, yeah. wanted to uh, take guitar lessons. He was playing bass in a band at the time, and he wanted to be able to play guitar. So I, I gave him a couple of guitar lessons to start him off, went over to his house, and the name of his band at that time was The Epics, which okay. was decades ahead of the term epic being cool. Okay. Later in the 80s and 90s, epic became the epic word. Uh, and so Tom was just a very charismatic guy on stage. He wasn't the greatest singer. He wasn't a guitar shredder. But he really had the self-confidence when he came out on stage, and he just sold you on what he was doing. Oh, wow. And that's a great trait for any any live performer to have. And uh, we were friends for a long time. As a matter of fact, I remember reading an lo- uh, article in London where he had been interviewed, and I was over there doing something with the Eagles, and he was giving me credit for being his guitar teacher because nobody really knew who Tom Petty was back then, but they knew who the Eagles were. So, uh, yeah, uh, and, you know, I showed Tom some stuff. Uh, Dwayne Alvin taught me how to play slide. Oh, we yeah. were all in battles of the bands together. And Stephen Stills and I had that band when we were 14. And there was something going on in that Gainesville, Daytona Beach with uh, Leonard Skinner from Jacksonville and the Alma Brothers in Daytona and Tom Petty, me, Stephen Stills, and Bernie Ledden all going to Gainesville High School at the same time. Uh, that, uh, I don't know if there was something in what was in the water that produced so many platinum selling artists and, and uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, or if it was in something we were smoking. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Way. I mean, we're <laughs> Florida crazy. guys, too. We are Florida guys, uh, smack dab in Orlando. I'm from DeLand, so I spent all my time in Daytona Beach. And Tom's from Miami. So, hey, uh, Don, thank you so much for the time. Again, April 18th, Florida Theater, Jacksonville. April 19th, Ruth Eckerd Hall in Clearwater. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great, great set with your special guest, Pablo Cruz and Firefall. And this has been such a pleasure to, to chat with you a little bit today. Uh, thank you so much. Please come out to the show and come backstage and so I can shake your hand and thank you guys for doing this person. Well, you got it, man. We'll do it. Love to. Take care of yourself, all right? And uh, and be well. We'll see you at the show. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. That is Don Felder. Of what a nice man. The Eagles. To be that big of a legend. Uh, and be so humble and nice. It's I mean, going with my. It's going with our theory again about the Tom, non- Tom Petty had to play guitar. Yeah, it's going with my non- our theory of the non dickheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you yeah. get like, yeah, this guy. I didn't even ask about his daughter being a singer. 
Yeah, yeah. Married into the Jenner family, Jeez, too. Jeez, yeah. Louise. Which, uh, I wonder... Slash walks down the street yeah. with his, his guitar neighbor. and then, like, rings the door. This is a story. And then, like, rings the doorbell because he was doing, like, he was doing, like, a song. Yeah. And, then, like, they needed a, a specific type of lead or something. I read this on something, and then they just... So, he's, yeah, I think... Like, I don't think he had the numbers. So he hit somebody else up to hit him up. To, and then he just walks down the street, just rings the doorbell, and just carries in his, like, you know, his Les Paul and goes back there and plugs <laughs> in in the home studio and just lays down some. That's crazy, right? Thank yeah, you yeah. to Bill for setting that up. It's always cool to talk to super famous uh, old rock stars, man. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, just the the Eagles and what they represent and how uh, huge of a band they were. And just the name and I mean it's crazy. Yeah, I yeah. remember the the little Don Henley thing from a couple of what was it like a month ago when they were doing something where they it's a story about Don Henley where they something went to court and there were some documents that were released and there was like some unsavory things in the documents about oh. Don, you know, and an underage prostitute. And he's uh. like, I wish you'd not release that. <laughs> you know, it was like one of those things where we're like, couldn't we just leave that alone? Couldn't we have just left it alone? Oh, uh, it's fine. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with more corporate time. All right. Where's that go? That is Tuesday 3. Tuesday 3. One of these nights. One of these lonely diary nights. Oh. Uh, uh, Dustin said he's coming in at one, so all right, we'll, we'll uh, okay, cool. We'll wait um, and talk to ten Twitch. Minutes he'll come in. Talk yeah, to yeah. Twitch for ten mm -hmm. minutes. <laughs> no edits in that. What a very nice man, Emily. Yeah, I did shit my pants a little bit when he said that, but that's what real men like. Like he has a good demeanor of all in all of his interviews. He carries himself like cool. Yeah, yeah. and like the way he said it, he's like, let me. Have you come backstage and shake your hand personally? Thank you. Like that's like something Jim Phillips would say. Yeah, it's old school. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like we don't say this kind of thing. We're like idiot. We're like we're like. You know, what I'm, I, I'm gonna start ta like taking people up now. I, I'm gonna start taking a, people up on everything they say. Well, They're like, oh, you should come stay at my house and poop in my toilet. I was so upset at uh, myself. You, you the know, Willie Nelson. Yeah, the, the Willie Nelson show when we talked to the harmonica player for Willie Nelson. What's his Mickey. name? Mickey. Mouse, Mickey. Yeah, yeah. It's Mickey something. Mickey is it's Italian. So, Mickey Car Carlucci, Mickey. Someone in the, Giovanni. Uh, but anyway, Mickey, when he, when he and he was serious. He like he. I remember he told Sam like, "Hey, Mickey gave uh, his cell phone number. His, you know, he invited you guys backstage if you want to come." Uh, Did you say that was three or two? That's um, three. Three. I mean, really, I'm just kind of putting it at three. Uh, it could be two. You know, it depends on how long Shaggy Two Dope's uh, interview is going to be. And then we got Dustin and Greg. Well, anyway, but um, and I remember telling Crystal when we were watching the Aver Brothers, like when he came out, when Mickey came out and playing with the Aver Brothers. And I was like, hey, that we interviewed that guy. He invited us back. She's like, what? And she's like, well, why, why did you accept <laughs> that's, it? That's how you did and the then I'm like, I don't, I don't want it to be awkward. And I think I thought he was just saying that as you know, like. You know, people just as a nicety, like, ah, come on by, whatever you want. And then if I did it, they'd be like, oh, my God, this guy actually, you know, now I have to, like, be nice to him and, ho and bring him backstage. You want to toot my harmonica? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I'm projecting that onto him because he didn't even have to invite us to begin with. So, obviously, he's a nice guy that uh, would probably be happy. Uh, I think the same way with Mickey um, Raphael. I knew it was yeah, Italian. Mickey Raphael, Do I get a credit for calling him? What did I call him? Mickey Carlucci? I yeah. feel like I should get credit for that. Like, even If you get close to the last name, but you hit the nationality, <laughs> I think you that counts. So anyway, you should go to <laughs> Don Felder and uh, his show and then go backstage and shake his hand. Do you want to know how shitty my memory is? What? I couldn't remember Raphael, so my memory said... <laughs> Find something Italian. <laughs> what was the pizza place that advertised with you 10 years ago? Carlucci's. <laughs> yes, that's right. Mickey Carlucci. <laughs> that's, that's how dumb I am. That's no, how no, dumb I am. That's how our brains work. They're just grabbing things randomly. That's, like how, that's how my hands work, too. <laughs> hey, ladies. 
<laughs> do you ever come into the house and then just uh, grab your wife? Like, come up behind her and just grab them? Yeah, but that can backfire sometimes. Yeah, it can. Um, in the, I got in the wrong at. mood. I got yelled at. Um, it's really not. You're not supposed to do that. Every time. But when you ask, it just kind of ruins the mood. Crystal, like, may I grab your boobs? Crystal, will, she'll bend over, be getting something hey, from the. Like uh, um, uh, do booty digger where you put you take your your knee and right into the rectum. No, 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 I'll just pat her behind, and then so sometimes she likes it and takes it as a compliment. Sometimes uh, she takes it as a, you know, an angry, you know, aggressive, horny gesture that she wasn't prepared to take. You know, very mad. It's a horny gesture. You weren't prepared to take <laughs> a horny gesture. You weren't prepared to take. That's like a rap. You're Castleberry too, dub <laughs> What time is Shaggy? Oh, he's like he's a long time. Yo, yo. Yeah, I don't know. After watch, these guys will be the most prompt and nicest two interviews we've ever done. Don Felder was one of the nicest people we've talked to. He's very nice. You, uh, you, you will tell people this. The, every interview we have the, is the best interview. No, <laughs> like, it no, makes him feel good. <laughs> no, no, I won't. You told Rex that today. Well, Rex was good. <laughs> he was in here. But you'll tell. Then you told Don Felder. He was there. You, in the same day, you no, said he was the best. I didn't say it was the best interview. I said he was one of the nicest people. <laughs> one of is fine. <laughs> I can have millions of one ofs. That's allowed. I'm just fucking around. You're just trying to make a mockery of me on my fucking show here. <laughs> You're trying to make me look like a fool. <laughs> And I am a fool. I deserve it. You should do it more. Pull the curtain back. Look at this fool. Look how foolish this fool is. I wonder what Don Felder's net worth is. Um, you want to take a guess? You're, you're really good at this, so... My new game is, is it more or less than unspeakable? <laughs> it's probably less. Less than unspeakable? I mean, unspeakable is a lot. Yeah, I know, but uh, how funny is that? We live in a world where... I don't want to live in that world. Don Felder, or I don't know this yet. I'm going to go he made more than unspeakable, just off royalties. I mean, it's 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 not too far off. Unspeakable's $30 million. And Don Felder's sixty million. So I mean, you can do you can be a dad double. with an inflatable pool, or you can be a world-renowned musician with so much talent. You can't even compare the talent. Well, unspeakable is just some twenty-year-old all dad. Twenty? No, no, no. Isn't he, he a dad? No, no, no. He's not he, a dad. Oh, that makes he, it creepier. He's like twenty-two-year-old making uh, content for children. Guy. He's just action Barney or action. He, right? No, no. Unspeakable is like as a kid. It's like, well, I said kid. He's, he's not a kid. 22, 25. Hold on. How old is on He looks older. He's got male pattern baldness. I don't Did know. I look up the wrong guy? Unspeakable's bald, dude. Look at that guy. That guy's got male pattern baldness. That guy's in his 30s. Oh, I don't know. Got I him. Never, yeah, I guess he's always wearing a hat on my son's. I don't, no, I don't know maybe anything not. about him. Maybe not. He's, he's an old young man, though. I'll tell you that. Unfortunate head. Unspeakable, that's his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was just her being mean to him. I'm going to troll this channel. Uh, it wouldn't matter. Uh, I don't know how old he is. Um, There's got to be a way to find it out. If only we had the internet. Unspeakable age. I thought he was a dad. He's 27. Well, that's okay. pretty close. He's a grown ass man with pubes. How do you pivot out of that? If you if you are making is that the is that the trade? How do you pivot out of making content for kids? Or do you not? You just I'm sorry, this is what we're doing. I think that's your audience. I don't know. Um, Mr. Beast is doing the same thing. But see, for some reason his doesn't resonate as much as like youthful. He's done a pretty decent job of keeping his more family. You got to do that, right? You got to do the family route. Yeah, and he's doing more like elaborate games yeah. and stuff, and challenges, that, and that's for everybody. You know, like you could, I feel like any age could watch the, you know, the game where he puts uh, someone, you know, seven years old through a hundred in little uh, glass boxes and have them compete each against each other for a million dollars or whatever. You know, 
It just uh, oh, ghost of a new bull. I've been missing these comments. Said nobody told moldy Mrs. Nugent that her interview was the best. That's true. I never. Said <laughs> we've had a lot of stinkers, dude. We've uh, we've had interviews that after moldy the interview, Nugent. Hold you on like a second. Moldy Nugent? Hold on a second. I'm going to. We talked to her about mold. I'm going to stick up for myself. We you, talked to Ted Nugent's wife about mold. I mean, <laughs> What's better than hold that? Hold on. I'm going to stick up for myself. I have never. I'm the only one that ever on the show has almost banged his head on the desk and said that was terrible. I'm the only one that's ever done that. <laughs> Actively said our shit was terrible. Well, we have, I can't remember one that we both No, there was upon one at the terrible. end, and I was like, oh my God, that was bad. Well, we I did, even said it. It was recent. We talked to a couple old men. <laughs> Does anybody know who this is? Yeah, they're not all. They're not I mean, all. Don Felder from the Eagles. Like, yeah. even though I don't, I'm not very from. I, I, Neither am I, dude. That's everybody knows the Eagles. Time, though. You know, Hotel California is yeah. a fucking one of the most iconic and songs ever written. He co-wrote Hotel California. He wrote all the music to it, yeah. like the guitar part. That's why. We, that's more famous than the fucking words. Yeah, that's why we're yeah. talking to him. Like the well, Glenn Fry wrote the words, and he's like yeah, he yeah. really likes the words. But the intro to Hotel Cop, that guitar intro is one of the oh. most famous guitar intros ever written. Ghost of Manubal says uh, the grandma from Mash was audio diarrhea. <laughs> no. Okay, I will defend that. It's not audio diarrhea. I think you're being harsh. Uh, you need to look at it with the correct I lens. About that. <laughs> you have to look at it with the correct lens. We fully knew it was audio diarrhea, and we were. You have to look at it with the lens of two. Younger men trying not to be uh, disrespectful to an old bag that they don't want to talk to. <laughs> you have to look at it from us. Like, look at how well we handled that scenario. Oh, no yeah. one else can do that. No and one else. And then ask can... yourself why we agreed. <laughs> you, to... <laughs> yeah. you have to ask yourself it's why a, we agreed. It's to... goddamn. Uh, it's a gamble. It's like, a gamble it, because any of them could These be good or bad. Tickets, These are the scra- We should yeah. just start calling them scratch off tickets. And believe me, all we... of our interviews should just be called scratch offs. We don't have to do these. We, but we go back to like it could be good, like because like even Koopa t- says all of the cancel me comedians blend together. We didn't do a no. I'm not gonna let you do that. We didn't do a lot of cancel comedians. What we is had that? that one guy. We had that one red face guy, Jimmy. What <laughs> Jimmy Monahan or what? Like remember the. What guy? do you mean by cancel comedians? Like know. guys that have been canceled or guys that want to cancel? I don't know. What was the uh, conservative wrestler we had on? <laughs> Easy three. Easy three. He doesn't count. I like that we one. We didn't even know. I didn't even know it was bad until everybody started uh, in the chat room virtue signaling. And, oh, how dare you have him on your couch? And I'm like, okay. I don't know anything about him. If you don't know the person's bad, is that what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't Not know what fault. the guy did. I don't even. I don't he know. did low key you... tell me the vaccine was shedding on me, and I was like, "Oh, really? Tell me <laughs> That's more." Fine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst uh, ch- uh, Twitch? What's the worst interview we've done? I think I gotta agree with him. The old lady, the Til- Mash Tilda lady? Swint is that her name? Yeah, but some of you had to have been laughing about was, how uncomfortable see, we were. <laughs> I laugh at all of that though. But, all of that shit makes me laugh. Like you, you know it's going. Like you, you've listened to the show long enough to know it's going horrible, and then you must get enjoyment it to know that laugh. we're uh, in excruciating. It made me laugh. Like, I feel happening. like if you, listen, I'm awkward. Daniel's like, oh if, my god. If you listen to our show and you listen to the interview and you and you're like, what the fuck is this? Are they interviewing some old bag straight? <laughs> then you're the problem. Then you don't even listen to our show. <laughs> you should have known that we're like, we're doing this for you. We're struggling <laughs> through an old bag for you. <laughs> no, but they don't even want it. <laughs> That's, <laughs> the <best laughs> That's the best part. That's the best part. That's the best part. We know what you want. We want us to struggle through an old bag. We're, we're <laughs> Making you listen to us struggle through an old bag. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Kupo. I think it's oh, audio no, bullying. Kupo says Kupo said the moldy Nugent was was bad enough that it was funny at least. I don't remember anything about moldy Nugent being funny. I just remember looking at her on the Zoom call and then being like laughing about like I was like oh she looks great and then I'm like thinking okay this this is weird and cool that we're talking to her and then I remember thinking like where's her husband number one. And then, uh, didn't you have like a giant American flag behind her or something? I don't know. It's just weird. The whole thing's weird. Well, which Ted is why Nugent's we did wife. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ted Nugent's wife. Why we did it. Yeah, yeah. What do you want us to do? You want us to talk to him? What do you want us to do? Another weird job? They tell us that. Like, we don't want you to. <laughs> yeah. We just, just want you to fuck Tom. around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You probably just want what you're doing right now. That would be, that's too easy. That's too easy. <laughs> yeah, we want to We've got to make it hard for ourselves. we got to climb through some old <laughs> yeah. bags. We need, we, we need moldy Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> 
We need old hot lips. <laughs> hot lips, hula hand. Old. Uh, yeah, there's got to be. Come on, you dementia guys are, hot lips. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we, have we have dementia hot lips. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of old men guitars. <laughs> okay, the, now Ingbe was that, good. I enjoyed Ingbe. Yeah, yeah. What other old men have we had? There, we we went on a string of old men for a while. I want to talk to. Fred I think Durst. it was the string of old men that chased away Sam. Can I'm serious? Can Billy get us Fred Durst? I yeah, I'm already on it. All right, I'm already working on Fred it. Durst. I'll tell the chat room the two we're working on right now. Limp Biscuit. We might end up not getting Durst. We may end up getting um, the skeleton. <laughs> yeah, we might end up getting <laughs> ma- the makeup skeleton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cuckoo I'll bananas. We have to get a cuckoo banana. <laughs> um, though, though, I'm trying to think of an interview that was worse than uh, de- <laughs> dementia hot lips. <laughs> <laughs> there had to have been one. What's yeah, the yeah. worst in person? See, in, all the art galleries see, we do, in, the little art gallery ones we do, those are hard. See, we get like a local art gallery person. Those are hard. I'll, I'll tell you, in person. Are we it, gonna get too real? We, I we think there's tr- no there's no filter here anymore. When it's on the phone, it it has the opportunity to go way worse because I always feel like if something happens. Oh, <laughs> Mitch Fatal, when Ross almost punched him in the face. Oh, I man. think I might go with that for being weirded out. What's up, y'all? Oh. Good to see you. We're hey. just talking to Twitch and YouTube. Come on in. Come on in. I got a poop, so I'll be right back. I'm kidding. How you guys? Good? Good. It was busy. We got the, the event this Saturday, and then... Um, You're doing the 420 event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the um, Savannah? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you know, that goes in the... So just getting ready for that, and then um, we just talked to Don Felder from the Eagles, uh, okay. <laughs> and then we're talking to Shaggy Too Dope uh, in an hour. So. <laughs> Which is an odd combination. That's wonderful. <laughs> You were sandwiched between Don Felder and Shaggy Too Dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a strange mix today. How you guys doing? What's new, man? Good to see you guys. Well, d- that's the hardest part is the doing things part. And, uh, I mean, you know we know all about that because we never stop doing things. I wish we would sometimes stop doing things. It'd be more fun to relax we were talking about that with don felder about like yeah. getting some time off or relaxing taking time for self self-care that kind of stuff oh there's headphones behind you if you want them man you don't have to wear them but no, you prefer. might you might like them i would prefer <sighs> yeah but yeah things are great things are really good i like That's uh i like that you're wearing suits i wear suits now i like wearing i it's, mean uh, i i went through a suit phase for a minute not that yours is a phase. I'm not saying that. Oh no, it's a it's oh. a it's a comedy Seinfeld thing. I like it. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's cool. It's, you know, when I, you go to work. <laughs> I wore a suit. Uh, I was ma- Yeah, I was producing the monsters, and I decided I wanted to wear suits, and I did it. I think I did it for two months. Yeah. Of like do, getting up and wearing it like every day. You know what happened with us is actually so on the first show that we recorded. Yeah. Uh, I was wearing a suit because I had meetings that day. And, I uh, like it. Yeah, and then with all the clips we posted, it was all with me in a suit. And then the next show, I wasn't wearing a suit, and everybody's like, "What the hell? Why isn't he wearing a suit?" <laughs> so then me and Greg are like, "You know what? That's uh, that's the new suit uniform. It is. Suit yeah, it is. Suit the it people is. spoke, and I We're said, wearing "Okay." Suits. Kind of like the odd couple thing. I'm not wearing a suit. I, mean, <laughs> I think Tom says I dress like. What'd you say? A baby dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> because I wear like I wear like vans and shorts and long socks. And well, I mean, I still have the and... vans on. Yeah, I think it all depends. Like I, I did the crazy sock thing for years, and I think if you wear Chuck Taylors, you either have to have you know, like no show socks or '80s tube socks. Yeah, long, oh, yeah. long yeah, or short or crazy or nothing. Or yeah, cra- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like if you do a mid. I'll, yeah, be, yeah, I, yeah. I'll say fuck you. <laughs> like, don't do a million. You're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, where's this going again? Um, this will go tonight uh, four. Tonight we'll do it after four. Dawn. All right. 
Uh, ACT4. Okay, that sounds great. Um, would you like to begin? Yep. All right, buddy. Here we go. And three, two. Welcome back to A Corporate Time. We've got Dustin and Greg Runge in here. Hey, hey! Oh, it's dying. <laughs> it's dying. <laughs> we need a new battery. <laughs> Uh, to talk about their podcast, The No Show. Um, Good and to see you guys. It's been a minute, y'all. So I've uh, known Dustin for damn near 20 years. So I'm going to ask Greg a lot of questions. And Greg's on my feet. Greg's on my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I see a lot of Greg. I don't see a lot of Dustin. Yeah. No, I see a lot of Dustin now because you're in my algorithm. But yeah. I, for a minute, it was just all Greg. So let's talk about the podcast and w when did you start it? And then, Greg, I want to talk to, to you about how you built your social media following. Yeah, man. Sure. Thanks uh, for being here, y'all. Well, I, I think uh, we don't classify it as a podcast. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually have uh, a, a little thing, uh, a, a slogan that we're, 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 we're working with that's, F your podcast. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. The I No like, Show We hate TV. podcasts, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I call everything a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, if you are on Instagram, yeah. I'm like, I got a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, all, all, yeah. it's all just a digital podcast. <laughs> well, really, yeah. the only reason it's not technically a podcast is because you can't go and listen to the whole show. There's no, you can't go on Spotify, you can't go and download the podcast. Oh, there's no way to listen to it? I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no really your marketing. Yeah, yeah. It's the no show. No, see, the, there, there is a way. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a little bit more than that. See, well, first off, like, I, I everybody's doing a podcast. Y'all, right? oh, we know. Tell me about it. So, <laughs> I, I, and, and, and for, and, and I love, I, I, I love and respect everybody's. You, you don't know, have to say that. Creative you can, just, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, ass yeah. all over yeah, if you yeah, want yeah. to. We but, do all the time. Yeah. Most I, podcasts are really bad. I don't know if you've yeah. listened to them. I don't respect like ninety five percent. But what I do enjoy, right, is is was scrolling through my feed and getting those those one minute gold pieces or yeah. those three minute stories or something like that that catches you. And then you know if so. And we weren't sure what we were going to do when we came together. We didn't know what kind of chemistry we have. Sure. And I see a lot of people who start these podcasts fail. So we just wanted to sit down and just and, and just start talking. And uh, we had the opportunity to have some studio time at the podcast at the pod in Sanford. And we just wanted to see where it went with it. It's a beautiful we, spot. I like the way they're, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 it's all top tier quality. I mean, it's like best of the best looking stuff. Yeah, it, it's great. gorgeous over there. It looks way better than our old rags. <laughs> what is it, like a studio set up for people that they yeah. can use to podcast? Yeah. Like yeah. That's how studio? big podcasting is, that there is a studio set up franchising. in Sanford to do it. And yeah. then you could just rent it out to use? Sure, by the hour, you can... You, you can make a, a, an annual deal with it i don't i don't know all the ins and outs with it but you can check it out it's oh. the pod creative studios in 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 downtown sanford yeah, oh, we should do that with this studio i know <laughs> yeah, i suggested that's that. way better than us doing it i told you i, I don't want to do this <laughs> well, every day guess, every guess, guess who's gonna have to be there mr engineer yeah. so it's it's almost like uh, a 400 square feet right and he yeah. and he has he has four different sets he has a green screen setup two couch setups with different backdrops and then the setup that we use it's just a table and a couple of chairs and it's you can you can put your own branding into the back. He stole it. our couch idea. <laughs> I copy yeah, wrote yeah, that. I mailed it to myself. Yeah, I'm like, do Still a podcast. sitting in your mailbox. <laughs> I have a couch. He just <laughs> leaves <laughs> them there. At least two chairs. Yeah. So I'm sure there's some patent troll that tried to do that. So you guys do a show, but then cut up uh, the interesting parts of the show and then release it. And do the short form. Okay. I love it. And then uh, our, our goal would be then to, if you wanted to watch the whole thing, um, you can watch it live at real time but we're gonna we want to bring people to no show tv dot sucks and uh and it's behind a paywall it's for 20 a month or 42 dollars a year and you can watch it in real time but other than that we're going to share the real gold clips on short form throughout the platform. yeah so you promote it and then if you want it go here and buy it yeah yeah, yeah that makes sense to me that's the way we used to do it so, Greg, like, how did you build your social following, and like, what's your background? Because it's kind of a mystery. Because I, <laughs> look, I, I tried to look for it because I'm like, how did Greg yeah, build like, I this? Don't, I don't know your story. And, I don't know either. But we got 20 <laughs> million views last week. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, so, where does it start? 
And, well, it started with, uh, let's say, uh, back in the, uh, the toxicity of 2016 when Facebook was real divided, right? Okay. Yeah. No matter what side you were on. It was divided. It was toxic. And, and I spoke my piece. And then uh, that after the election happened, it kept on following. And I, I never wear my ideologies as my identity, but the people who attached on me did. So uh, I did concert production for the last 20 years, and then COVID shut that down. Yeah. So I had to kind of do other stuff. Yeah. So uh, I was at, in 2019. I one of the one of the main people that I worked for was Gillette Stadium up in in New England, and did all their production work. So anytime that the Pats did something on the road, in this case it was the it was the Super Bowl. Uh, our 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 team would go and we would build the 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 performance the stage thing the parties afterwards okay so i'm here in atlanta and i'm posting them at the super bowl and these people who attached to me because of ideologies would just wouldn't let me have a good time and i was like you know what f this the next day monday i i got rid of facebook and on tuesday i was bored <laughs> and i needed something to keep my hands busy so i downloaded tiktok and that was right when it came from musically so i was there in the early times in in 2019 okay oh, right on. so early adopter of tiktok and right. then um and and then uh, using tiktok as your form of social media what was different about it than facebook that you found right away that i, I was able i i was able to create again where uh facebook was just a place where you just you know you, you gave your sob story or you or, or you, you you spread your toxic positivity look what my life really isn't but you you make the world take here you got to create i i fell in love with the, the lip sync aspect of it and i was a theater kid growing up and i tried to do the acting growing up and i, I wanted to get into you know television and stuff but with TikTok, i was able to create almost like you would a movie in short form but i would you would get the the gratification now as in theater with the likes or shares and stuff sure yeah. so so it 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 it, it, it yeah. made me feel good there's like a fuel there sure right. so in the beginning time i did all the things that you that you did on tiktok you the the, the dances the, the the lip syncs and i did a lot of stoner comment uh, content like memes and stuff and i i got a grassroots following and it it, it blew up and i uh Across all the platforms right now, I have about 2 million followers. I have Woo. one on Facebook that's 1.1 million and another one that's so over 600,000. That is now the no-show page. Nice. I stepped away from it about a year because I needed to collect myself on some stuff and, and try to evolve with the times because it, it's not musically anymore. It's not TikTok. It's not lip syncing. It's not stuff. Like everything else, it evolves, and I needed to figure out what I was going to do with it, and this is going to be a big part of it now. Cool. Yeah. Um, Got how, a plan. How have you felt being Nobody Daniel? comes in here with a plan. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Nobody ever comes in here and says, this, I thought about this. This is what I'm doing. You know, me and Daniel often talk about the value of audiences, and it's all across the board. Yeah, it's like with, all different currencies. Yeah. Like every... It seems like every social media platform is like almost a different currency and it has a different value or it speaks to a different people or a oh, different yeah. age group or a different, it could be anything, you yeah. know, like something yeah. cultural. I don't know. Have, they, you, have you analyzed that yourself? Of like, well, okay, what is the value of this? You know, two, yeah, two million followers, like, it, because it seems like the more they are involved with you, the more active they are, the more valuable they are, because we've seen. Chat room says you need to start wearing suits. Okay. Oh me! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was gonna. Yeah. I, I'm gonna talk to Dustin about that. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately, I wanted to bow to him <laughs> when he walked in here. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm like this guy. I'm like, I have to pull my pants up. <laughs> like, this guy means business. You thought you were fancy with your polo. Yeah. If I see someone in a suit, immediately uh, they're better than me. <laughs> it's psychological. It's a power move. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I remember. Oh, it's just Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. It's like you Halloween. just got high, forgot to do laundry. <laughs> It's the only thing that was left. Um, but have you like studied the value of what like different audiences are on social media? Yeah, and they they definitely are different audiences. Each platform definitely has a beast. You can repurpose content all day, but uh, they're only going to work a, a, a certain amount of times. Like, and and I repurpose and do it wrong myself. I I know what each platform should be like. I haven't been able to. In the last year, I I haven't 
I have set up the plan, like you said, yeah, and, yeah. and I know what I need to do, but absolutely each platform, it's its own beast. Uh, you can't grow a, a bigger following quicker than on TikTok, but maintaining it and, 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 maintain, and evolving with that, because it's quickly evolving, is huge. And, and it's numbers, like a bonsai tree. Yeah. And, and numbers, you have to maintain it, Tom. <laughs> and I got to work on it. I, I Tom get doesn't the, understand half the things I say to him. He just looks over <laughs> and be like, what? Who is that? What do you say? Turn sure. your hearing aids off. I, uh, I, I got to work on it and get my algorithm going again. And you got to be faithful on your posting to, to continue growing momentum. But a lot of times those numbers... Those numbers are just fake, dude. And, and, and I don't want to say fake like a bot or anything like that. But like, if you don't look at it realistically and you, and you make it your identity, it's gross. And I've ran into a lot of people like that throughout because I have grown. I, I did grow up with the app and a yeah. lot of people are who's who on the app and they have these numbers. And You the, did it organically. I yeah. mean, like, it the, looks very authentic because you've been doing it a very long time. Yeah. You know? But the uh, the number of people that you meet that are, are not who they perceive to be on app is disgusting. And how they make it their identities, like they're these quasi-celebrities now. Like, I get uncomfortable leaving in town if someone's like, oh, Greg is strict. Like, I, I don't talk about it unless someone mentions it or, mm -hmm. or get pulled aside and someone takes a picture and then people I'm with like, what the F was that? And then you have to explain. Like, I don't make it my identity where I know a lot of people do. Like, I have, let's just say my one account, a million followers. There might be a 100,000 followers that, that might know my name. They're, 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 and, they, and they remembered following me for some reason. And then there's 10,000 people that really know my shit, like my shit. Yeah, and uh, then there's yeah, a thousand people that follow me and will do anything I ask. And then there's a hundred people that have my back 100%. So, those you, I can say I have a million followers but all yeah, day but long. It narrows, yeah, it narrows us up. That we found that too with the just podcasting, like our BDMs are, you know, in the industry terms and radios, like P1s, like the people that would call your show or yeah. interact and use your sponsor. Active. Yeah, but the most engagement, and you're right. It's like you have this huge audience, but then it it does narrow down to a tight core, and then that core is who actually really supports you. Right. Like, and yeah, the, yeah, there's only a few like, that will eat a candy corn out of my butt crack, <laughs> <laughs> and those are the ride or dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike those, B, yeah, Mike B will yeah. eat a candy. In fact, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you yeah. come to the BDM Luau, uh, I'm bringing candy corn. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Line up, yeah, yeah. and I'm Line gonna make him do it. Yeah. <laughs> He's he said on Facebook yeah. he's not doing anything ridiculous. Well, his boss, he's a manager you guys now. know Mike B. Mike B's boss That's told ridiculous. him he couldn't helicopter his penis at our event. <laughs> his boss said that yeah. and made him agree before he left for like made him agree at the end of the yeah. day. He's like, I'm making you yeah. swear to me you'll do a helicopter at the yeah. BDA Blue Out. And then when you walk away from that conversation, you know he's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're, you're, just, yeah, you're, you're, waving. Just quitting, right? you're waving, he's yeah. driving away, you're like, have fun, and you know what he's gonna do. Greg, <laughs> do you find people are surprised when they find out you're TikTok influencer because if like if you if it would be a great game show if they put you on a pedestal and they're like all right you have three I'm gonna give you three jobs to guess what Greg does uh sea captain stone mason yeah, yeah, or yeah. tiktok influencer yeah. Yeah, no, what, like, about, I, I what about owner what about <laughs> owner of very large uh and and tech friendly head shop yeah okay yeah, yeah, i can yeah, see yeah. you pull that, up in yeah. a hummer and get out on the, it's like yeah, a head yeah. shop as big as fair villa and it's just yeah, like yeah. Oh, every strand known to man yeah. because and i'd be like oh there he is i'd be hugging you it's like here's some coupons because there is a stereotype with tiktok is younger for younger Younger generation. Oh, I mean, yeah, started yeah, as yeah. a dancing app, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. So. Uh, oh, and, and I crushed the dancing app. I was gonna back say, back that probably set yeah. you apart to be like a grown ass man on yeah, there, fish like, out of water yeah. with like, yeah. I don't know your age or anything, but you just dancing around on there. People are probably like, hell yeah, you know, like that's different, you know. That's yeah. I, out. I have a few dancing ones that are probably over twenty. 25 million views. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> and then I have a, I have one of my stoner vids that I did in Vegas with uh, a, 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 another character, Polly. We, uh, that's my biggest viewed on Instagram, currently sitting at like 74 million views. Oh, my God. It's crazy. It, what's the weird stuff that comes with that, though? Like, I mean, have you had any weird run-ins or people that say weird stuff or uh, people that in, their, in, the, in your DMs are like, I'm going to kill myself. Please <laughs> tell me. Please stop me. You know, Do you like, read every know. comment yeah. and all that? I, 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 I did in the beginning, and then I learned very quickly, like, especially on viral ones, I'll give a solid 10 minutes to it, engage in each one of those, and then and walk, walk away. Because... 
uh, your first 10 minutes, you'll get people that really appreciate what you just did. And then there are going to be people that are just trolling because they troll. And, and there's no reason to feed into it or give them a platform. So, yeah, I I, it, but I have I have very thick skin. I've 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 never really did a come at you video. Ones that I, I, I have, uh, we've, we've gotten great relationships from it. But of uh, one thing I could say is I never had to make an apology video, and uh, that will never happen. Yeah, nice. I, I like that. It doesn't seem like the apology videos do anything beneficial no. to you. <laughs> it like, <laughs> like uh, you, you just get a bunch of hate from people who are like you shouldn't be apologizing, and the people that are already mad will not accept your apology. Know, <laughs> 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 that will not change it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really for nothing. It puts me in a weird spot yeah. too as a viewer because I don't really trust a lot of social media. So a lot of the apologies that I see especially ones that include ukuleles. Sometimes I look at those and feel like, I'm like, you're doing this to double down to get the hate. And I see kids talk about that where they're like, I don't care who looks at it as long as they're looking at it. And I'm right. like, ah. Like, how, what's your, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you say you have a tough skin. Did you start with that? Did you have to build that up? Do you think you have a more healthy relationship with social media or less healthy, the fact that you are in it in it? I, I, well, I guess maybe because this comes from the generation that I grew up that like you, you had your share of bullies. Is bullying is bullying right? No, absolutely. Do pay, people take it to a whole different level? Absolutely. Yeah. But you have to realize before you put yourself out there publicly that you, not everybody is going to be your fan. Not everybody's there with the best intentions. And there are, there are ways in which that you can do, if you know there are certain things that are going to trigger you, there are ways that you can eliminate that from the rip and go into your comment uh, sections and what you, you allow on there or not. You know, I have a, I have a self-conscious thing with my teeth. And if that if I knew that that was going to like trigger me every time that I did it, then I, I'm, I'm just as much of a fool for allowing people to do it if I have that tool to shut that off. Hmm. Now, do people take things to an extreme? Absolutely. There, have there been kids that hurt themselves because of it? Sure. Are there some sort of regulations that should happen? Um, I, yeah, I'm sure there's some guidelines, but your parenting, it starts there, you know? Sure. But, and there, there, I see there's some, like TikTok itself, they have really have broken it down. Like the average age of a TikTok user right now is, is mid-30s. So it, it started. That's you, Tom. It started as a kids <laughs> app, yeah, from Musically, and there was a lot of things. But you, the way they've built their algorithm, unless you're liking those kind of videos, then you're gonna see only adult type stuff. You're gonna be segregated that way. They have it great like that. Like Tom's are all camel toe videos, <laughs> <laughs> and they're the Tell extreme me. camel toe. No, have you seen on. the extreme camel toe? <laughs> come on, the extreme I, camel toe. Don't tell Mr. Runge. What are you? <laughs> you, <laughs> you got Runge. You need I to know this. Runge, you have to know about extreme camel toe. I, I want to check out a camel toe. <laughs> no, these are not. These That's are nicknamed <laughs> big camel toes. I'm like, wow, oh, it's a big Runge. <laughs> God bless that. Runge. <laughs> Look at him run. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, you know, speaking of TikTok, there is no I extreme mean, camel toes. I made that up. Like, but you, somebody buy that um, URL, please. <laughs> <That's> extreme camel. <laughs> by the way, I, I, yeah. I don't know that. anything that's going on in the world. <laughs> but, yeah, but you know extreme what, camel toes. Weren't they that. Uh, like threatening to? Uh, disband TikTok in the United States. Yeah, do you guys like, know anything about that? Yeah, you want to explain that? Well, well, yeah, what's going on with that? <laughs> Excuse me. September. I don't know if uh, it's... It, uh, I haven't kept up currently in the last, I'd say, week or two. I know it's. You got to talk to Dustin too, because he's sitting over there in his suit for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> and the chat room's even comedy. The chat room's like, "Why is there a man in a suit for no reason?" And he's talking to the big runge. I, I like when you put on a suit for no reason, like a limo driver. <laughs> because I'm, oh, you're here to drive runge to the extreme gamble toe competition. This is the, I do look like I had a limo driver in a suit, and be like, "You could do this in basketball shorts." <laughs> the suit you, this, is too you much. You know what this looks like? This looks like the big runge. <laughs> on his way to the extreme camel toe competition with his limo driver slash security. I'll be more than happy to pass it over to, to, to Dustin if he knows about no, the No, I'm TikTok just reminding game. Tom he's a terrible not. host. Yeah. 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 All Tom can think of is getting you guys out of here so he can go back to TikTok <laughs> extreme camel toes. Uh, uh, so uh, it, it still has to go through the Senate. I don't know if it has gone through the Senate. I know they did debate it at one point. 
uh, at one day anyway, but it still has to go through the Senate and then has to be signed by the president. And then at that point there... That old man? Oh, God! (laughs) They have 165 days to either divest their company or they will be taking off of the App Store. So it really does just sound like a big, like money grab and like a business takeover sure then it does a ban so uh so uh, yeah. we some shall americans see. gonna be like i want tiktok yeah. <laughs> i want i want all of america's tiktok followers like uh, that seems pretty valuable <laughs> right yeah That's pretty uh, awesome. and i i plan on I, i'm focused on like i said the plan i i'm planning on it to disappear for october and to utilize the platform because again there's no other platform that you can grow it's going to be the wild, wild west over there with their with their TikTok store. So there'll be opportunities for mom and pops to be able to make some quick money if, in fact, it does disappear, and uh, use that time to move people over to other platforms if that's what there you, you want. There you go. But so Tom's uh, big on what's your one you like? Rumbler, <laughs> parlor, parlor, parlor. So you're done. Dustin, uh, how would you meet Greg? I and don't then... need pity questions. <laughs> 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 how long did it take you to drive him, Greg? <laughs> Did you use GPS? Do you use the British <laughs> accent for the GPS? Because I find that's the most fair. Do you want me to head? Excuse me, sir. Shall we head to Extreme Cabotel? <laughs> <Town? laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Dustin, how'd you meet Greg? Uh, through West End, Sanford, okay. all that stuff. We started uh, working together on a couple different event stuff and everything like that. And then, uh, then we did a podcast together for like two weeks. And uh, then... That we started doing this. All right. Oh wait, so you canned it. You did the podcast here, like this. Well, we started with a whole different concept, and uh, it was a bigger show, and it it didn't go where we wanted to go. So then, uh, then we revamped, and uh, like I said, with Houston, where we just kind of, well, let's just sit down, let's start filming, let's start recording, and uh, we've done that for about two months now. Nice. Tom and I did that, but we just decided to power through. Still not working. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I do tell like, uh, you know, uh, new podcasters, I'm like, it doesn't have to be the format it can be that you started you with it can be anything like, you want don't follow our lead and no. just stick to one format Do for it, 17 years and never change it and we can't change it now because our guys you probably get uh, this yeah. uh if you change one thing that they like you know yeah. I mean, oh, so they start bitching oh my oh, yeah. god and, and that's like the thing on social media a lot of times if you go viral for that one thing whatever that one thing that you truly went viral for the, that's what they, they expect you to do and fr- from there on out. And, and uh, I've always kind of just thrown stuff against the wall and just saw what stuck and did it. I, I did memes. I did the dances. So I always switched it up. So I, I would like to think that I'll be able to switch things up with this. We plan on doing a lot of man on the street stuff. We're looking at getting our own building downtown uh, and still having relations with the studio that we're working with. But we want to have our own space to be able to brand it. Uh, Best case scenario in downtown, like if we could find a house that we could make a content house to have our studio and have that backyard and the kitchen, all the different elements of short term videos, we will have that capability. Like an incubator. Hold hold on. I can rent you a house. (laughs) I was just thinking about that. We got screwed. We were going to get we're going to have Jim Colbert from the Jim Colbert show. He told me when he sold his fancy property that he was going to move into the Air T&D and that he and his lovely wife, Tori, were going to stay there for about three months and really take a little heat off of us because Tom got his foot in a bit of a financial hole. And then right before, after he sold the house, I mean, money in hand, he's like, I'm not staying at that dump. And he peaced out. And now we screwed him. Well, I feel bad that I introduced you to the person that you had to deal with. You you guys want to collab on a content house in downtown? I need a place to live and do a studio. Well, we got if it's got everything in it. In fact, we got a boom arm with a light on it. Just pack the light on it, stick a microphone on it, and you're ready to go. I've always wanted a content house. (laughs) Oh my God! Remember? Oh, but I want webcam and sleepover parties. I want the whole one for your dorm, not not the hype house, not the hype house, for your dorm.
storm in Tampa, oh my yeah. God, you're like, let's go to her bedroom. <laughs> oh, you go to her bedroom and you're like, oh, is she asleep? Uh, I think she is asleep. Well, I'll it... just wait here for hours. <laughs> I was listening to her breathe. <laughs> <laughs> There's no audio. The last sleepover party thing we did, it wasn't even at a house, it was at a dirty motel. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. one of the girls that gave Tom a massage, no, no, and I believe she has on. an OnlyFans account, no. is on our YouTube page, and she comments on all the videos all the time, and she's like, ooh la la, Tom, look at how Tom, ooh la la, look at Tom. No, 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 you told me she gave me a massage. I'm like, I do not she remember it. She told this. me she gave <laughs> no. you a massage. No, I didn't no, tell no, you that nothing. Didn't this I is didn't from get a her massage. mouth. It's from her mouth. No, Dustin I, was there. We I, had... I vaguely remember a massage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was a massage. It was like a massage. <laughs> what I like, remember How's that? he acting? How's he acting? And you're like, oh, and then you did your freak out. You punched the mirror. I'll fail. Oh, so, you know. I like that There was a massage, though. There's no even video of that. No. No one had cell phone cameras. No. Streams back in the day it wasn't like it was collecting a video stream yeah. it had an it had video yeah. but like it just went it like went yeah. it was like a stream of water into the dirt <laughs> yeah. it just went into no, nothing and yeah. then gone yeah yeah, yeah it was it crazy was like, uh and then the uh, voyeur dorm we have a bunch of connections to voyeur dorm one of the interns that worked with me on the morning show yeah, that was in the 90s he, right? he became a gay like a gay voyeur, dorm. voyeur boy yeah, yeah. in the, you know, he was of age, you know, I'm not saying anything weird, but he yeah, was yeah. in the, and he'd just walk around the house and in a jock strap with all these cameras on <laughs> and he's laying <laughs> in a, and that's, he was making money. He's getting like free room and board and he, like, cause it was like, that's and people were paying deal. cause well, it was, cause there's nothing like it. Uh, yeah, there, yeah. There was the beginning, a, yeah. uh, as Greg knows, like the beginning of anything like TikTok, all the social media, even like what social media used to be is so crazy. That's to way see, different now. To, you know, see the evolution of it. It's a legitimate job now. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know multiple people like you and then Adam LZ, Obsessed Garage, Matt Moore. Like, we know multiple people. Like, I can't even count them on one hand. Well, me and They Dan, make money from this. Do you think, and this is kind of an obvious question, but because of when you started, because you're early adopter, that is the reason. Like, if you started now, do you think you're going to build the same audience? Me and Daniel talk about this all the time. Like, if we started podcasting now, no way. I don't think I could. Would we ever have. I'm not that good. The, the audience, just because of the amount of other content there's out like you just get lost i in would the like sea of to content. bet on myself but i cannot yeah yeah um i i think i would be able to see what's going on and try to emulate i guess and yeah. in, in what's good um because that that's kind of like the thing right is is what is the what is the trend right now what do people like what are people engaging in and i would like to think that i could jump right in and do what's relevant but I don't think that I, I I would be as motivated as I was as an early adopter. Okay, yeah, right, yeah. that makes sense. Because so, I was able to grow with it, and there were it, it, it's it's a little bit different. Like, yeah, I think it helps. Like, maybe I can help out. I think it helps to not see what everybody else is doing for it not to be popular. So, like when we started podcasting, it really there was nothing to compare it to. There was no way to see if anybody was doing well or anybody doing bad. It, it was really a nothing. It was literally a blank canvas, and then the paints were anything you could think of, right? right. Like could be anything. You could throw food on it; it's paint. Yeah. But for you and I, when we're making these shows. No, there was nothing there, right? Now, when you start a show, well, you've got Rogan up here at the top, and then you've got one billion really bad shows below you. So there's yeah, all these and, different things that you are a absorbing, in between, and, and they're going I'm... in your brain, and subconsciously they're bouncing off of you. And and, and I think you're yeah. micro influenced by them because it's just it's yeah. a real thing now. Podcasting does have a like even us, we're trapped in our the way that we do it because it's just we're trapped. It's just the way that we do it. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, influenced yeah. by it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, I don't know. It's yeah, it's it, a, a very interesting conversation though, because yeah. I don't think I thought that social media was this important. When I signed up for Twitter in what, 09, my wife, who was, we weren't married at the time, we were just dating, not even engaged. And she's like, hey, there's this new thing, Twitter, get on this. All the kids, all the, she was in UCF, yeah, yeah. she's like, all yeah. the college, she's dating some old man. She's like, get on this. <laughs> and I get on there, and like, it's my biggest, it's, it's not a lot, it's only like, what, 21,000? That's not a lot of people. My old but... man boyfriend has Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> do you know Andrea dates this little old man? <laughs> do you know how many times my wife, somebody said that to my wife? It's gonna be hundreds of times in, in college. People are like, oh my God, here comes that little old man again. So let's uh, plug where we can find the show again. It's the No Show. Um, where can people yeah, subscribe man. to hear the whole show? And uh, in, in, and bits you know, and pieces. Yeah. Right now, the, the only way to get the whole show is if you go to our website, www.noshowtv.sucks. Uh, which like we're that. very proud of that. I like that. Oh, so <laughs> you're going to do a dot yeah. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you go there, you can uh, sign up up there. Yeah. Wait till um, you say by Jim Colbert dot sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Dustin uh, made QR codes before anybody knew it? Before. Before. In like 2015. Yeah. And, and everybody in the real radio production department said he's an idiot. Yeah. I, just wanted, I just want to be a real radio person. You, you were like, you guys should get a QR code. And I'm he like, made his one. I'm like, this will never. What is this black and white puzzle? Yeah. <laughs> Look at him now. A, is this a magic eye? Yeah, yeah. What is this? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so and everybody I, uses them every day. Every the goddamn message. day. The pandemic saved those things. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Absolutely. Everybody yeah. was like, we need a menu. What happened to those magic eye things we hated? <laughs> well, put those on the menu. I made a QR code for Emilio Estevez once, okay? It was a big deal. He, 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 like, I know. No BS. You've always been in the forefront Dustin of Dustin was yeah. doing that in graphic design. 15 years before I ever saw him again, it was like, you did it. And I was like, that's stupid. And then they disappeared. And then they came back and everybody's like, this is how you get your it's menus now that the world is dead. I'm like, what? That's the same thing that happened when I discovered dabs. Everybody thought I was crazy. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That is true. It's like the crack of weed. <laughs> uh, Dustin, Greg, thanks so much for coming Yeah, by. it's good to see you guys. I hope uh, you'll come by you more, man. It's good, to, good energy. Yep. And we will see you tomorrow. Awesome. Perfect. Fun, guys. <laughs> We're still on the thing. So. But uh, did we go too long? Like thing. Uh, we did 30. But how long, how long was Don Felder? Did we end up going 20? Oh, I didn't them? know this was going to the same spot. Oh, trust Don. That's fine. It's fine. We'll move it. Trust we'll Don. figure it out. I just... um. This is still for Tuesday, right? Well, it depends on... Uh, I only had... No, Don was 16. Okay, so it's close. It's it, It'll work. Okay. <laughs> it'll work. Perfect. It, 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 it will definitely work. Because you wanted this is for to, to come off of Don. And if anything, yeah. we, we can move Don to Tuesday, no, this, too. Th this actually ends up being perfect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, this is a perfect 46, okay. which is exactly what Casey needs. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being here, guys. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime you guys have something sup to promote or want to pop by just to shoot the shit, please. We're going to go on a Let's do it. birthday party, too. There's something up there, and you can do some band interviews. And okay, cool. Like that. oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. Um, how much money you got in that lease over there in that 18 weeks? Well, uh, it, we, we now went month to month, so it's kind of just we're feeling out. Like, they, they were coming on three What's years, up, guys? So I don't know um, what we're going to do with it. But, uh, uh, Jonathan, I believe you're absolutely correct. I've read that, that fun fact as well. Yeah, and, and I don't know if... Uh, yeah, we'll just talk about it. We are looking for a place. We, uh, there's a place right next to this Mission. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the place right on the other side. It was like a little skate shop. Oh we, yes. We went in toward that building. It's pretty fucking awesome. The whole front room would be perfect for the studio and everything. But they're uh, already talking to somebody who does body piercings and high-end jewelry, so they have to go and present to the city because body piercing is not allowed. Uh, but they're willing to wait a couple weeks to go present, and then we're told no. So we're kind of in limbo on that. Sure. Right now. Yeah, but yeah. And, and, and on our professional side, that's just our fun side that hopefully fucking blows up into something. On our professional side, we just signed a major contract with, or I take that back, we're fixing to sign a contract with our first client downtown that's going to bring us 50 cases. Oh, okay, cool. And that's going to be our running our running business costs. Uh, okay. So the money is there for the rent and take care of all that stuff if that's something that we really would think about. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, Chris I'm still still owns it or did her husband get it? The still, Chris. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, at least that's what the... Uh, the Thursday. Thank you guys again. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Good seeing you. Yeah, yeah. Always a damn pleasure, my friend. Yeah. Uh, I'm stuck in my tiny little hole here until I get this file saved. Um, okay, that went to KC. I think we're doing okay today, guys. 
Um, keyed up BDM. I believe I saw that on Namecheap. There's a bunch of them. Depends on the URL company that you're using. Um, let's see, Namecheap. I'll show you. Um, I would rank both the interviews we did today. Um, I would give Don a seven. I would give this last one a six. And I don't have any for uh, Shaggy, obviously. See you guys. Have a good rest yeah, of your day, guys. Oh, these are great. Yeah, you can do a lot of dot sucks. If you want a dot sucks, it's 278, 300 bucks. You can get a dot sucks. Okay. We could do Tom and Dan dot sucks for 300 bucks. Interesting. Okay. Well, we got um, a while. Before all the tragedy. Yeah. It's a long time. Well, what was Paul saying? Oh, Rex. I give Rex an eight. Mm, I can look that up. We could try to buy waterfountains.quench. There's the ones that I see are dot sucks, dot supply, dot studio. Dot Studio is pretty cool. Dot Surf. There's tons of them. Yeah, Rex was probably my favorite one. Oh, Tom, guess what just expired this morning and I forgot to tell you I hit it back up. What? The Air T&D website. Oh. It expired on the 13th. I own the domain orlandofarts.com until 2030. <laughs> um, let's just do a 40-minute voicemail. Ooh, slamhog.com is available for 69 bucks. I'd actually buy that. Yeah, I got you. Ready when you are. Oh, let me pee. What's going on, Twitch? The uh, people's social media following is so fascinating to me because it it, uh, it is all different in value, and some people have hundreds of thousands of followers, and it's seemingly worthless, which is crazy to me. It's like how can this be worthless? But it's like some of the like bikini models uh, or like. Some channels that have a ridiculous amount of uh, followers, they're just, it's, they can't monetize it in any way. And it's so weird. It's like, how can this be worthless? But it is. I mean, they want to make money off of it. They just, their followers are so spread across the world that there's, the marketing doesn't really work in any way 
or they can't point the marketing towards something like it's like the makeup influencers that do like makeup tutorials. That's very easy to fucking for Revlon to come in and pay twenty thousand dollars for a marketing <laughs> campaign. Did you say Revlon? Is that a makeup? Yeah, but I didn't even know you knew that. So when you said that, I was like, this motherfucker's been uh, watching no, commercials. No, no, I was just saying like <clears throat> Revlon. Because then it's like, okay, Revlon will be like, hey, we want to promote this, uh, you know, whatever line of product. And we want this influencer to teach, the, you know, do tutorials on it. And they, they'll, they'll I can beat spend. anybody. I can beat any listener in a brand off. <laughs> makeup brands, go. Revlon, I'll give you that one. Max Factor. Oh, that's all I have. L'Oreal. Oh, Clinique. Yeah, because you are Andrea, you know the No, I memorize dumb things. I know I know a lot about really dumb things. What's considered the best makeup? Mac. We need to have a makeup influencer on the Put show. Put makeup on my dumb. face. Makeup's important. It is important. For ugly people, oh my god. If you don't have it, you're ugly as shit. <laughs> Well, also just for camera, we learned What's that. What's important uh, for women? Our documentary. Uh, like, what would women? What would women wear if they didn't have makeup? Like, hats? More hats. It makes a difference. Um, I like it when it's too much makeup. I like it when they take their clothes off and you're like, "What the fuck?" Because the face is like all different. <clears throat> Clown on the top. <laughs> <laughs> like a Barbie doll body. All right. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just babbling. <clears throat> Would you like to start? Yep. Here we go. And three, two. Welcome to a corporate time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Let's do some voicemails. Yes, sir. The spoken word that you can uh, you can leave us a voicemail if you get our free app with all of our content on there, all of our events are on there, all of our A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan shows, the Uncensored, A Mediocre Time shows are on there, Medium shows are on there, OG shows are on there, interviews are on there, like the one we did with Matt McCusker, who's a super famous, super popular comedian. It's all on the app. Just search for it, the Mediocre app or Tom and Dan app. And if you want an app of your own, uh, Mr. Matt Fred at gmail.com. He is the one that uh, basically redid our app mm -hmm. uh, to he's make it work He's still working on well. it right yeah. now, yeah. Continues to work on it. Uh, he's really good at his job, and he can make you an app, mrmattfred dot, or at gmail.com. Yep, at gmail.com. All right, um, let's try this one. Tom, Dan, BDM Kylie. Yeah, Mike. Um, so I'm trying to click the link for the Facebook event page for the Luau on 420, and all I keep getting is event page can't be found. Can someone please fix it? Thank you. Love you guys. Bye. Now, did you hear the, the reason <laughs> I pulled this one? The reason I pulled this message was not to highlight that I think the link went down or maybe her internet was bad. I did check the link. It worked for me. Ah. Um, but I think what you hear in this possible voicemail is trouble in paradise. You can hear at the end of this call that two of our most famous callers. <laughs> oh, the most famous couple Couple caller, callers. Yeah. Listen to the end of this one more time. Tom, Dan, BDM Kylie. Yeah, Mike. Uh, he sounds reluctant already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. BDM like, Mike. Don't, don't call him about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's what he says at the end. Listen. Um, so I'm trying to click the link for the Facebook event page for the Luau on 420, and all I keep getting is event page can't be found. Can someone please fix it? Thank you. Love you guys. Bye. I don't even know why you had to do. I don't know why. <laughs> why'd you have to do that? I don't even know why you called it. Why you? Why you gonna? You're gonna make them hate us, man. Why you being such a bitch? We're at TGI Fridays. <laughs> yeah, why are you doing it? Why are you screaming in the middle of my grandmother's funeral? Now, I think that it didn't, it, maybe it doesn't work because you're not on the BDM page and we made the f Facebook event through the private mm -hmm. BDM only mm -hmm. Facebook page. And if you're not a member, you're not going to be able to see it. Correct. So that was a, you, because you couldn't make it totally public yeah. because we're trying to. How do to, you feel about that? Because it seems like we do have a swath of people. Mm. that are mad at us that we use Facebook. But it's seriously like the industry standard for invites and stuff, right? And I know I can hear a lot of you chirping right now in your cars or whatever. You're like, that's wrong. No, seriously. I think most people, like when you get invited to something that's in social media, a Facebook invite is the industry standard. 
But now people still out. get mad at us. Like, I don't do Facebook. I get that. Yeah. But why not just have an account for events and just don't check it for politics or whatever? Well, you don't even need the Facebook event. We send you the event details in an email. So every BDM has an email Correct. account. And then but they send wanted them. to reply on the Oh, Facebook yeah. But, invite. Yeah, yeah, well, you don't need. I mean, once you're a BDM, it, you're you're allowed to come to the event. Um, yeah, so you're good. You don't need to check in or you know press that you're going. Although it does help us with uh, figuring out how many people are going to show up, so we can get the estimate. That's been the biggest problem with BDM events. Um, is that we've run into problems throughout the years because. Yeah. We have thousands of BDMs, and when me and Daniel started this, we came up with these arbitrary things that we were going to give BDMs. One was a show every single uh, week, you know, a brand new show on Monday. Actually, it was originally supposed to come out on Tuesday, but we just started doing it on Mondays. But And then also two free or two events that yeah. are BDM only. But the problem is, if, like, we, you know how hard it is and complicated it is to plan an event with not having yeah. any idea of how many people will show up? With because, the potential for thousands to show up. Yeah. I mean, if we got everybody, if everybody, like. Oh, if, every, it if would, everybody showed up, it oh, would cripple like the company. Oh, it's like Planet Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> like, if everybody showed up who was a member of Planet Fitness, yeah. they would not be able to um, do business. I'm sorry. We can't, we'll have to let people in. Let people out. So we, we end up inviting thousands, you know, uh, over 5,000 people, if you count them and a guest or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, way more than that. And then uh, hoping, and now throughout the 10 years of doing this, we kind of get an idea of how many people to expect, which helps. But at the beginning, that's why we did, uh, you know, we were originally going to do an event event at king's landing and then the owner freaked out because he, he saw how well, the rsvp got huge yeah the and then because it was the first one so yeah. we had to do it at the suggs farm which is a field and then the rain kept a lot of people away yeah, that day or pouring rain so we'll never go back they and then we did at the sanford theater we did that medium event with tone x and there's 700 people left outside or uh, something no or, 100 or 200 what was it 160 or how many 166 were the people? 164 yeah. 163 something but um because we estimated that uh we're like ah four or five hundred people the seat, seats 500 so we think that we should be fine oh yeah we had close to 700 and then up. 700 showed yeah. up and then uh you know i got my numbers wrong uh, a little under 200 people were left outside and then we had to do an ancillary event you know we had a lot of mistakes yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, many, so, many, so many more to make so yeah, many more yeah, mistakes yeah. to make yeah, yeah, yeah. um let's go with this one hey show uh i consider myself to be pretty much trash you know not real classy um pull you know stumps out with my riding lawnmower type of thing uh you know just general trash and sometimes i forget that i'm trash and uh, i was listening to the show the other day and I heard a commercial for the Dolly Museum over in Tampa, and I thought, oh, man, my wife is a huge Dolly Parton fan. I'm going to look this thing up and take her over there one weekend for, like, a little getaway. Come to find out it's not Dolly Parton at all. And uh, that was a slap in the face that I'm trash and sometimes forget it. Love the show. Bye. The Dolly Museum. You know, he got me. This is triple fold. I thought he meant, like, a Dolly. Like a, a doll. baby doll, like a baby doll, <laughs> like a dolly museum, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then also, aren't yeah. those things that are crocheted to go under plates? Aren't those also called dollies? There's Dolly, the painter. Uh huh. There's Dolly, Parton. Yeah. Okay. There's Dolly, like the doll. Oh yeah, like a baby doll. And then doll. there are those things, D O L L I E. Thank you, chat room. It's a dolly. The go underneath and then there's uh, also the thing you pull, you put a, 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 fr a refrigerator. <laughs> really, Dan? A refrigerator? Do you say yeah, refrigerator yeah. or refrigerator? That's more of a hand cart, but they call it a dolly. They call right. it a dolly. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many dollies? Are, do you say refrigerator or refrigerator? And uh, what do your sons say? Are they picking up any trash? You need a trash oh, for Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maisie yeah. talks like an old gangster. Yeah. Like, she doesn't even, like, she's like, like, that, that, that. She, like, she talks like Boomhauer. Well, if you were born in Florida, you already have uh, a trash stench on you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> stench? Yeah. A stench? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've realized that from my travels. When yeah. you get out of Florida. Oh, you mean, like, a reputation you were born with? Yeah, yeah, but also it's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it is. The, it the is. stereotype is true where you're just walking Like, around. I don't think I'm trash, but anytime, I have never told somebody from yep. from the West, 
that I'm from Florida and had them like, oh, yeah. Like, they're all like, oh, yeah, I knew it. Like, you're weird. Yeah, we like, know what you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then they write. Uh, they write. <laughs> Is that how you're supposed to say it? Um, they write. That's how Maisie talks. And uh, so, you, you you know, we got that all going for us if you were from Florida. And then it depends on um, – you know your socioeconomic mm -hmm. uh, upbringing sure although uh there's a lot of rich white trash um I, which we don't talk about that much um and especially uh, in florida i mean i rich, love yeah, a good upper middle class for rich sure. white trash i, I mean know. if you can afford a couple of side by yeah, side yeah. there's you're... middle class trash yeah. <laughs> there's all yeah. spectrums of trash my mom and dad have tried real hard to not make me trash i've yeah. blossomed since their passing uh -huh. yeah, i feel like yeah I'm a little more Walmart than my mom and dad would have ever wanted me to be. But you want an element of trash because you want a day walk between trashy and the fancy. Yeah. So you, you can't be too trash. I've always, me and Crystal agreed, uh, like when we were in. Um, Crystal's his wife. Uh, when we were in uh, 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 snow mask skiing, right? Yeah. About or, or, or about around a bunch of rich people. It's beautiful. Um, and then uh, you know what I liked about their lunching area is you can pull right up, like to, and you're not going fast. Everything's graded. The snow oh, is yeah, good. Sunlight's too resort. fast for me. Yeah. I can't handle it. It blew my wig off. But um, I I looked around and I'm like, I like being the trashiest person around me. Okay. Um, because uh, you know, I don't think anybody likes to. Uh, be in the company of too much trash because then you're like, uh oh, uh, you know, this you want to match the level, you know, but then you, uh, I feel like you don't want to be uh, where you are the fanciest person. You know, that's in the element of, you know, you're around too much trash. You're like, I'm the fanciest person. You want to be the trashiest person at a fancy place. Okay. So that you're, you're, you're right there on the cusp of, were, There's also more fun with trashy usually. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, trashy like people have the, way more fun. The fun is in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of trashy, this voicemail is entitled "Airsoft." Yo, BDM Neil here. Wanted to uh, give a little memory because Daniel getting hit in the mouth just reminded me. I'm sure you guys heard of airsoft. I know Ross, I think, got into a little bit of Airsoft with his boys. Let's talk about Airsoft for a second. Where are we at as a nation with Airsoft? Because I don't see, I remember the popularity of Airsoft kind of blossomed in the mid-2000s for me. And you and I got into it a little heavy in that we would look up, at the radio station, we would Google airsoft guns and look at these airsoft guns, and I think we bought a couple of them for the studio, and they were giant hunks of crap. Yeah, but we bought cheap Chinese knockoff garbage. Yeah, are there good ones? Oh yeah, I mean there is a community of people, and let's get some air. Let's get some good airsoft guns that they uh, drive to. Let's the shoot them in here. Let's just this thing to be covered <laughs> yeah, well, in beads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody else comes in here. They, well, let's stop doing any interviews live. Let's do them all Zoom, and we can trash this hoarded up like I want to. They meet up with their airsoft buddies in some sort softies. of softies. They call them softies. Airsoft uh, compound, which is usually yeah. an abandoned. It's a like, warehouse that somebody's dad owns. <laughs> warehouse. Yeah. My dad's rich. He owns this warehouse, and we used to keep all of our classic cars in. Or I know for a fact in Miami. That's all I, rich people do is put classic cars <laughs> in their warehouses. In Miami, we used to go out. Uh, to 8th Street and Croom and where uh, like there was abandoned there was an abandoned hospital that we used to play paintball as kids and uh, they that sounds it, pretty cool they, actually but there also was uh, airsoft players and but the airsoft players like there's there's get the a hell divide. out of here kids we're playing serious <laughs> war games because they're tactical yeah. like they'll show up and then put on the oh, yeah. tactical They've gear got on the, they're like flight to the left <laughs> And they have like uh, you know uh, replica AR-15s and handguns, and it looks like real guns. Yeah. And then they are practicing moves like a SWAT team, Who you know, like, you know, going through the whole thing. And they're always slow and sloppy. And, <laughs> well, some of them are bigger, yeah. you know, like they're not, you know, they rounder. They, they all want to be in the SWAT team, but. Uh, you know, life got in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, life is hard. Yeah, yeah. Life's you, don't tough. Have, you don't have to go through the same training. I, and you I don't have to want, buy a, want the an eight hundred dollar AR airsoft gun. I don't want the hardship of SWAT team. Mm -hmm. I just want the fun of SWAT. You know, let's see what he says. Hold on. Okay. Um, but you know, basically, I got into it with some older guys that were my mom's like best friends' kids, uh -oh. and we always hung out even though they were older. Uh oh. And they really loved airsoft because they were like big military kids too. Um, one actually finally went to the military, 
But uh, I remember sitting there and we were playing against these other guys that were real serious and dudes had like sniper rifles. It was like insane. Um, but yeah, one of my friends got shot inside his mouth. He like spit out the thing. Guy like snipered him in the mouth. Dude, it was insane. But yeah, I just wanted to. Was that yeah? From like I'm, yeah, an old dude that knows how to shoot an airsoft sniper <laughs> rifle. If he's got some knucklehead kids there and you're just playing again, I will snipe you in the throat. <laughs> They, uh, there's, I've seen this on TikTok where there's airsoft sniper videos of, and they have a camera that you could see through. Do you have your friend laying next to you? And he's like 23, 24. No, no, And he's giving you the coordinates and you're, and you're doing that little thing where you're like. No, 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 Because the little plastic. And you got to adjust for the air. It's real. It's not as much as a bullet because that plastic BB won't go that far. Yeah. So you're only you're shooting someone from thirty yards. You know, is that That's still pretty impressive? <laughs> yeah, but and then there's an arc on it, and it's a round ball, so it's not that accurate. But uh, they have a replica sniper rifle, and then they're you know, uh, you know, pulling back the bolt and chambering a little BB pellet and I want shooting that. other fat dudes <laughs> that are playing in the forest. I shot a fat dude in the mouth. And, I want that Only to go home to their bitching wives about uh, how they've been uh, playing with their friends all day Remember in the that, forest. Remember that Nerf Moab I sent you over the weekend? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some scientist guy. You can buy it for $4,000 online. Everybody's seen the TikTok. But I wanted to buy it. I was like, that thing's <laughs> badass. It's got a backpack, and you load all the Nerf darts in it. It's just, it's just a minigun, just straight blazing, man. Yeah, but that, how are you? Four thousand is such a waste. Like, what are you but shooting cool. at the wall? It, it, no, you shoot it at one guy. <laughs> it's only for like your friends. You can play Nerf, and then they, you give them guns, and then you go in the bathroom, right? Oh. And then you come out and you spray them down. And they laugh, and that's it's only good for one gag. The I understand the allure, and this is going to make me sound like a real uh, curmudgeon old man get to work. Uh, but when I was a kid, I enjoyed playing paintball. Like uh, the uh, is this your anti hobbies for adults? <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. It's just when adults you, should have hard hobbies that help them in their work. When you show up, you should and, make your own axe handles, and then you pull you pull out your replica AR, and then you're you you've preloaded all the BBs in your uh, magazines, and then you're putting your magazines in your all in your, your flak jacket, your, your flak jacket, yeah. and you're putting on your flak jacket. You got a and your belt. helmet, yeah. and your jacket, Tactical helmet, and then your boots. You get a test your GPS. You get a test your. <laughs> yeah. you're like, can you hear me? Over, yeah, over. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hear me? And, and, Hello. And then, uh, you know, you're playing capture the flag and some abandoned, you know, on a Saturday morning or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you skip church for this. And so, you know, and then you're playing with your buddies. Then you're eating a bologna sandwich. Your wife made you. Uh, no, you know, no, the, you get Jersey Mike. Yeah, like, you treat yourself. How you much enjoyment Mike. are you getting out of it? Uh, I don't know. You know, as a middle aged man. We went to Jimmy you know, John's instead and I got the gargantuan. Yeah. When like when you make three kills, are you like, yes. I think you are. <laughs> I think you uh, are. Yeah. Then, like you're like, yes, I'm the best airsoft. You are, yeah. Guy. All I th think when you leave, you are pumped up and you call your wife and you're and she's like, How did it go? And you're like, three kills. It's the best I've ever done. But when you're forty And you go home and you make love to her. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also like twelve year olds. Why'd you have to make why'd you have to use my age? <laughs> I was just saying, I'm not into any of this. I'm not into any of them. But then like there's a fourteen year old on yeah. your team that your buddy's son <laughs> that he wants to play to. Yeah. And then I'm he's like, like, Good job, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you were like, kick the ass. I'm the non mobile one. I yeah. just stay back at base. Are you embarrassed at all yes. about what you're doing? Yes. Like or do you post it proudly no. on the There's not many people that like that's why you don't <laughs> see about many hobbies. You always you find yeah. out I got a buddy of mine. I have a buddy of mine that has a hobby. I'm not even going to say it. It's too close. It's way too close. I do have a buddy that he will only eke out. Like occasionally you'll see like an accomplishment and it'll be like, I want to race. It's RC cars. I'm not going to say who it is. Okay. But it's like, it's the high level uh, monster truck cars. Mike and, from Mike's weather. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> no, it's okay. way closer I, I, than that. I grew up with this guy. Okay. And he, you can tell that he keeps part of it for him. And you can just, and maybe I'm, maybe I could be reading this wrong, but I would, I would, and I think you would even agree with me. I have an emotional power to like people reach out. I'm an emotional person yeah, yeah, yeah. and I can look at what he's posting and I can see that he loves it, but he knows that there also is a heap of shame that comes with this. Oh, so no. he keeps it close to the vest because he and, knows that people will make fun of it. He and, knows that people will make fun of it. And listen, I'm jealous of people that can have fun 
uh, on their own and know what they like yeah. and with the shame free fun. You've said that for a long yeah, yeah. time. But but like I would enjoy now if my sons ever get into paintball, that's they, my sons are going to be my portal back to fun. EJ thought I was talking about him. No, I was not talking about you. I talk about a friend <laughs> I grew up with in Deland. Uh, so a professional. My sons will be the portal back to fun because if they get into paintball, I will play One paintball. One of them with will. Them. Chances are, right? Yeah, I don't know. If they, do kids play paintball now? Dude, they, I, I, they play I, virtual paintball. I mean, we played. <laughs> I never played like you played. I played like I didn't have. We didn't have a lot of money. I played redneck version in my woods. I never got to like the gear and you go to the place and you hide behind the inflatables. That's top tier. You got to do that. You you were a cool kid. I had to play. I'm like, oh, I barred my buddy's paintball gun, and we'd go run around the Deland Woods and shoot each other in the eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. that was. We'd wear, like, motorcycle helmets. We didn't have the yeah, real yeah. gear. Well, we didn't yeah, have yeah, chest you protect. Had pump guns. Yes, or, we yeah, had a bunch of trash. That's early 90s paintball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like, you know, but, uh, so I want to do it, but I remember when I you was. You were the heyday, dude. You had the parks. But, you had the inflatables where people would show up, and yeah. there was a desk, and you'd buy oh, your I, balls before you went in. You'd be like, give me 20 of the lime green slimers. I had, I, had, I had the mini mag. Hell with yeah, the double did. trigger, uh, yeah. But look at how happy you look uh, just yeah. saying that. And then I had look at how happy you look just saying that. I had the hopper that had some sort of like a thing that spun inside to feed oh, the balls it, faster. It, 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 you get no jams, no jams yeah, on yeah, this yeah. gun. I, the, the, Tom Van, no jam. Then um, the uh, you see that you had to go compressed air instead of CO two. CO two <laughs> wasn't as efficient. So you get the big bottle of compressed air. <laughs> here's, a, here's a fun fact. I used to have the uh, cord that went to my backpack, and I had the six uh, holders of paintballs. Like Look at how excited he is. <laughs> Dude, this is cool. You need to get this fun back in your life. My stepdad took me and my French buddy, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play at the bar. Which nobody's heard of until now. Suckle <laughs> Bill, look at your hopper. You have the mechanized hopper. I remember his mom <laughs> went, went topless in his pool one time. <laughs> and then it you blew, were like, oh, it blew my stepdad's Eric, hat off. Eric, I can see your mom's boobs. <laughs> my mom's diary. Eric. Eric is smoking while he's playing paintball. His mom's uh, boobies are out. Uh, he reached out to me the other day. I remember, like, he's like, hey, how's uh, it? how dare you look at my mommy's titties? <laughs> so we can't say that. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, I remember when I was a kid playing paintball. Uh, but it's it's unlocking a core memory. You need to do more of this. <laughs> no, no, no. You well, need a hobby. Uh, no, no. I'm shamed by now. But you need a hobby. I remember seeing the old fat dads playing. Like it was a bunch of kids, and then a couple of random old fat dads. Yeah. That had the real nice gear. Well, you needed stuff. the potatoes out there to <laughs> yeah. give you something to shoot. But I remember when I was a kid. I'm talking about like a uh, 12 year old Tom, right? Yeah. Uh, like 13 year old Tom. I remember even I'm holding my mini mag and yeah. then I see and the you're fat like, guy. Your and mind starts watering. You're like, like, oh, Eric's mom's boobs. <laughs> <laughs> It was me, Eric, and then a bunch of other young teen boys, yeah. and then a big forty-eight-year-old fat oh, dad. Yeah, me. <laughs> I'm out there. Yeah. And then I remember thinking, I was like, uh, when I grow up, I'll never be that fat dad. I'll That's embarrassing. Chain. No, no, no. And look at you now. No, no training for a, a a marathon. I thought it was, no, no. I thought it was embarrassing that he was playing with a bunch of oh, young teen boys. Oh, I thought you were talking boys. about the way he let his body get. No, no, no. Uh, I'm just talking, like him playing. He's playing a paintball game. On a platoon of a bunch of teen boys, and he's taking it deadly seriously. Like, yeah. you know, he's, uh, you know, screaming like flank off, like yelling and those guys military have been around terms. forever. Yeah, yeah. It and must I, have been it probably pretty tough him. to have been that guy in the medieval times to be the like, come on, guys. Oh, he'd be. Let's cut just down go. Uh, let's go uh, beat these uh, dead horses on the edge of the castle. Like, you know, I, I take it real serious. I don't know. He's, I don't know where I'm going with that. He's Jon Snow's fat friend. He's a coward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Samwell. Yeah, yeah, Samwell. Samwell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. Almost done. Almost done. I always thought that. that I thought <laughs> one more season. I thought Samwell's uh, when he uh, started dating the lady with the the baby. Uh, oh, the wildling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was. I I always thought he uh, like. Did he get killed, Sam? Why? Is I don't know what happens to him. Don't tell me. I don't. I, I don't know either because I watched it the first time. He, uh, you know, ten years ago, and yeah, now yeah. I was like, I'm seeing it all over. For I remember time. liking his character, and then I remember at one point during the show going, "You pussy!" <laughs> like seriously, I remember thinking that. Like I was thinking, like this guy is a real scared of everything. Um, let's try this one right here. Hey guys, this is in regards to the Mitch McConnell sister or whatever. They make emergency like power hammers. That you know, they shoot CO two. Yeah, that we've 
I think we played that one or at least heard multiple people that wanted to comment about that. Um, I was banging on the glass in my Tesla like this morning. I was looking up at it because the sun was shining right through and it was like hot. Oh. And I was like banging on it with my uh, my hand and I'm like, I don't think that would stop nothing. Dude, like if something fell on my car with that glass roof, I think it would it, I think it would smash my head. Well, it depends on the point of it, how dense it is because I remember realizing how tough it was to break a car window when uh, back in the radio days when we took out my 1991 Ford Escort and we had like a monster truck run it over and when they people were throwing tomatoes at me and me and Tuttle were in there doing yeah. something. I was very surprised the first time as a young man I saw a car window broken. No, I'm being serious. Ah. It like it looked like it held together like there's a sheet of plastic inside of it to keep it all together. And I was like, That's magic. Well, it's I remember Tuttle tried to run and because I was telling him like break he had a helmet on. I remember that. And I was like, Break the car window with your head and he ran Full speed at it multiple times, running his, uh, you know, dirt bike helmet into my driver's yeah. side Probably window. Probably took some years off his life doing that. <laughs> Not a smart And it wouldn't do. break. Yeah. It, like, it, it, the damn thing wouldn't break. I remember we- Was it rolled all the way up? Yeah, I wonder yeah, yeah, if you'd yeah. rolled it down like two inches if it- It had, may have been broke. Yeah, yeah. yeah something. It, but it, it, I remember thinking like, man, I it would be difficult. I don't even know if I could punch through through this. You I know? Like, I always think I can. I've seen really strong, strong people that I know stronger than me, like yeah. the rock punch a window and nothing happens. So I know I couldn't punch through a window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess if I hit it right with my ring or something, like you said, though, if you could have if you could have well, a maximum amount of force with a tiny edge on it, you might well, be able to they, do it. Well, that's what they sell those little puncturing tools where you just have to hit the corner. And it's, it's like, uh, you know, it, yeah, like, it looks a like an needle. ice pick. Uh, ice pick, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, that'll break easy, but a blunt force uh, yeah, hit, not, yeah, you're not You're not going to do it. Um, let's try this one right here. Hey, Tom and Dan. I thought with Sam being gone, I'd step up my voice now. I usually could for one a week, so I'll call in later. With no, we heard that one. Man, I got to get better at deleting these. Well, you know, it's uh, I got to go. This is a funny one from uh, Canadian Josh that I've been not wanting to play, but I'm just going to play it. It's quick. Hey, Tom and Dan. It's Canadian Josh. I was wondering if you guys have ever considered maybe trying to get on the Joe Rogan uh, podcast show. He has uh, quite a popular podcast with uh, a lot of listeners, and sometimes he inter- We had a person email that last week, so he's just being <laughs> a D-head to us. God, Lord. What were you going to say, buddy? You know, I uh, Joe Rogan, he went back to all platforms and mm-hmm. uh, and not only just uh, on Spotify. It does say a Spotify podcast still, which is interesting. So there's still the driving force. But, yeah, it's across everything now. It had to have been because advertisers were like, you, we're not getting the same numbers that he used to get. And so we well, have to numbers open it across back up. the board are down. So yeah, if you yeah. open up numbers, you can get back to where you were. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not even back to. I don't think anybody. No, you'll never back get to, back to where yeah. you were, but you get closer, I think. Yeah, yeah, because. Then because you know it's all about the advertising money, um, and so you know it's pretty interesting how he did that. Because and I like the fact that they did pivot and they don't hold steady. Yeah. With like, hey, we're never gonna change. You know, it's like I think businesses have learned their lesson with that. Yeah, I think they your people try to. Yeah, I I think you're exactly right. Um, this one is entitled the dog pooing. Hey guys, so I'm walking my dog here, and it happens every time with both dogs. Um, they look me in the eye when they shit, and it's just a look of shame, and I don't know if it's, you know, every dog or what, if Dansby looks at you, Dan, in the eye, and if Lena used to look at you, Tom, in the eye, and just shame. Yeah, what is the thing with dogs doing that? Because they, my dog, every dog I've ever owned will go, and then they'll they take a while to find their spot and then they'll circle circle and then Dansby will he'll go and then he'll turn around and right before uh release he'll turn and look me right in the like dead in the eye square in the eye is it a instinct okay i have a theory yeah it is an animal trait that i am an animal he is an animal and he is doing one of his most basic and important things right Oh. So he looks me in the eye to find he's it, it's a it's an instinctual thing to to keep tabs on another animal while you're weak. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is I was that about, it? Yeah. 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 Is I, that it? That was what I was gonna guess. Is this is why we're in business together? Is that it, it, the animal probably looks around for anything with eyes and then locks eyes because it's in a vulnerable position. Yes, the most. Yeah. It's only on like two legs, even. Yeah, and it's it you know so while it's doing that, it just maybe evolved to find another animal's that's around them and make sure that they're not going to attack them. Yes. Even though it's, if it's their owner or whatever, it's just ingrained into their do biology. Like when I go to, and this is a serious question. I'm not making jokes. I like talking about this stuff with well, you. How often if are I, you in front of another human? Maybe we no, know. <laughs> I mean, when I go to the bathroom here and I go a lot, you know, I do cause I got IVF. Uh -huh. I don't mind telling people when I go to the bathroom here, is it still in me? To without even noticing subconsciously, am I sweeping the room for eyes? It may be why we like to read something, mm, so we like to focus okay. on something. So that's why we pick up the shampoo bottle. Yeah, yeah. It's be, and so that it makes it easier. Mm. It's like some. I like we're creating false narratives. <laughs> I love creating false narratives. It makes sense yeah, though. It does make sense. Okay, because he's right. I, the a dog will look at you in the eye. They so, all do. So like animals will. Wisely was the worst. And so we probably have it as humans, and that's why we like to focus on things. Why we're using the bathroom hmm. because we are searching for something to focus on because that helped keep us alive in that vulnerable position so that's why it i could go either. along with all of this <laughs> that makes i bet you that's right i think but like, like we, we, we can't even look it up nothing can be done <laughs> there's no way to verify that no hold on look up on google why, why do, do dogs okay. yeah yeah uh, I, I mean you know what i'm gonna ask chat gpt Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to go to the source okay. because it, it can speak to us. I'll get our intern here. Okay. Uh, I haven't been using him lately. Apologies. Let me let me go to the we're gonna go to the tape. I bet you were close. Okay. Uh, hold on. That here. makes sense to me. Uh, why do dogs look directly into your eyes while they are pooping? All right. Boom. All right. I put it in there. We're going to see what it says. It's going. Ta, 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 ta. I, they're going to they're gonna make this faster. It's not fast enough. They're going to make this faster. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty fast. No, uh, it's not fast it's, enough. Here is our intern. What say you, hard drive? Dogs often make eye contact while pooping because they feel vulnerable and are looking to their owners for reassurance and protection during this exposed moment. From the Tom and Dan Studio Newsroom, I'm hard drive, the black teen robot intern. All right. You don't sound well. So we were that. close. I guess. It, it, so they're weird. vulnerable and they're just looking for comfort. See that? Uh, I feel. I feel like our uh, theory is yeah. more correct. Like they're I don't looking think for comfort. I don't think they're looking for comfort. Because I'm, I'm not looking for comfort when I'm looking around the room. Because they're, uh, you know, I know they got domesticated, but uh, they're, you know, their roots are they're used, they're wild. So they, you know, they wouldn't be looking for other, uh, their, f you know, family or other people in their pack for comfort while doing that. They'd be looking constantly for predators. You know, it's it's the it's predator kind of, thing makes more sense to me than comfort. It, comfort, yeah. like I've never looked like honestly, this is gonna sound weird, but again, not a joke. I'm not looking for comfort when I do a number two. I'm looking to ex get waste out of me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's but, not, I'm not looking for comfort. Comfort, not nurture. I'm not looking for mama hold me. I'm not looking for any nurturing. But it's like why humans see faces and everything. Like this is a thing where we see faces before any other shape, like in the clouds or like in the bushes or whatever, because it was an evolutionary thing that got passed on because that helped keep us alive when right. we, you know. 200,000 years ago when we were in the wild we anything with a face can kill you so you constantly like so seeing faces first would keep you alive therefore that genetic trait was able to pass on uh because those are the people that lived so now we all as humans see faces before anything i'm asking it again i'm, I'm going to clarify here i said are you sure it's not because they're looking for predators there we go yes that's another valid point, Dan. Thank you. Thank Dogs you. may also look at their owners while pooping to ensure safety as they seek protection while in a vulnerable position. From the Tom and Dan Studio Newsroom, I'm Hard Drive, the lesbian non-binary teen robot intern dad. Well, all right. <laughs> That's a long title. That's a, uh, that one can't even be done, I, think. <laughs> I don't think you can be all of that. That's an impossibility. 
Um, interesting. Let's get another voicemail here. Let's go with dude. If you like, um, there was some crazy things that I saw, like the Museum of Natural History in DC. Like when you didn't you see, tell me anything about it, well, you must not have had a very good time. When you see ancient human bones and like the replicas of like weird, uh, like the I'm how anti we replica the, bone. <laughs> with, and, or, or, I'm anti replica. Some bone. of them are real, but it's like the replicas of like this is what this ancient human looked like, like a pygmy size. Yeah. Like how uh, do you feel about dinosaurs? Like, well, it's where crazy. it's like you go to the dinosaur. And you're looking at it, and you're like, holy crap, this is amazing. And they're like, yeah, its finger is the only real bone. <laughs> the rest is yeah, yeah, the rest is all replica. <laughs> it bone. does ruin it. It does yeah, kind of yeah, ruin yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Either go all replica yeah, yeah. or none. <laughs> you assume it's like, if it's all replica, then I'm back in. Because yeah, I'm yeah. like, well, of course it's a replica. You can't, you got to have museums all across the world, right? You got to yeah, spread yeah, the yeah. love. Yeah, yeah. And there's no way you can fit them in everywhere. <laughs> but you can't just give us one finger a talon. <laughs> you can't give us a talon. Um, this is Jim from Lakeland, which um, I, I, I figured I would hear from him. I didn't even think about asking him to give me some feedback on what to do in Lakeland. Tom, Dan, and Brenda from Bithlow. Jim from Lakeland here. Uh, I have maybe an indelicate question of uh, Brenda about her all-day foamers. Uh, now, Brenda's mentioned several times that people have come up and touched her without permission. Uh, and there's not too much argument to be made that that could be considered a form of assault. Uh, but if uh, if I were to come up there and really mash on those foamers, would that be grounds for sexual assault? I suppose they're prosthetics, I expect. Uh, and does that make any difference at all? What do you guys think? Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. I mean, Brendan's a, a good sport. I mean, I don't like anybody touching anybody. But Brendan's a good sport. And in that case, I think he would probably just laugh. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I do think you could get yourself in some trouble doing that to any other drag queen because I think it's case by case. Well, it wouldn't, by the letter of the law, be sexual assault, right? Because it's not if a you wanted real... to have sex with a drag queen, it could be. Well, I'm just saying you're grabbing uh, balloons. They're balloons. They're balloons with nipples on them. Yeah, yeah. It's like not real. So yeah. it's that you're not grabbing someone's sexual organ no. or even body part, right? So you can't really so, make that yeah. argument. But it is implied that yeah. it's that. So the your intent is sexual assault. Mm, so this wow, is a, we're doing that. We're doing a backwards <laughs> intent <laughs> reversal. Yeah, no, yeah. but I, I, I get what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. If you ran up to a beautiful uh, drag queen, uh -huh. let's just say, let, yeah, and 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 behind grab and, their face and honk her foamers. Yeah, yeah. The intent is to sexually assault. Yeah, yeah. The person. Even though by the letter of the law, it shouldn't be sexual assault. But it is. Al although. But it is. It, but it's, if you did it to anybody else, it would be sexual assault. Yeah, because it's real Correct. body parts. But this is not. So then, therefore, hmm. it's uh, fine. Listen. Um, I wouldn't go doing it to people. Plus, most drag see, queens um, I know are six foot five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah br um, Seriously, I know three drag queens that are all over six two. Brendan O'Connor is a big boy, yeah, he'll, and he'll knock you out. He'll come bong your head. He's yeah. a lover. He's a lover. But yeah, yeah. He's no, a, but if you wanted to, he's born in Canada. Big, strong Canada man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would not want to fight him. No. <laughs> like, no. He had a couple choices when he was born. He could be a strong Canada man, <laughs> or he could do uh, bingo drag. And then you're glad you, you're lucky you got that, or you elk among you. Um, we got time for one more. Yeah, let's do one All more. Right. One more, because I know we're up against an interview here. All right, let's go with this one. Tom, Dan, BDM Mike. BDM Kylie. Went to Medieval Times tonight. <laughs> it was awesome. It was. <laughs> All right. Well, you're you're drunk and embarrassing yourself. <laughs> My dad enjoyed Medieval Times. <laughs> My dad enjoyed medieval times. He did enjoy the uh, the the pageantry and the show. But my dad had a vendetta against its competitor, King Arthur's Feast. Okay. Because my dad said, I went with my boss to King Arthur's Feast, and the seat they gave us was down near the stables next to a horse's ass, and it was taking big old dumps. <laughs> Apparently, my dad went to King Arthur's Feast, and one of the tables is near the stables, and they put my dad and his boss, and they ate their I don't know why my dad and his boss went to King Arthur's Feast for their lunch, but that's what businessmen did back in the day. You throw your tie <laughs> over your neck, and you go right into King Arthur's Feast. You drink beers. You'd watch the pageantry. Now, I— Oh, they have no alcohol there at King Arthur's Feast? 
Oh, no, she, they're saying in Dolly Parton's stampede that there's no alcohol. Oh. I can't go to a dinner show without alcohol. <laughs> Pirates has alcohol, and it's, it's draft beer and a pitcher. And they bring you a pitcher, and I'm like, just leave the pitcher. And <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, drink yeah. it out of the you pitcher. You need it's alcohol sad. to watch that. Yeah. Um, doesn't it smell like a barnyard inside there? I uh, mean, it, because horses uh, will doo doo a lot. Yeah. And they, I don't think they can be trained to hold their doo doo. It, they, it that's why you put. Uh, that's why you put the open air diaper under them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the open air diaper and the horse carriage. You know. You know, I like the open air diaper, and they should do open air diapers for babies. I have a patent pending. For a diaper system where babies would like babies like toddlers would walk, and instead of keeping the feces on their body like a conventional diaper where it's holding against the skin can be very yeah. abrasive, my open air diaper design is under them like a flap, and they can just walk like horses, and it just falls into the flap <laughs> just like a Saint Augustine uh, bag, like an old <laughs> nag, an old Saint Augustine flea nag. Uh, these babies can poop right into the open air diaper. Now. In medieval times, all these dinner shows, they don't exist anymore, right? Medieval times is open and is a chain. Pirates Dinner Theater Well, is, I know Pirates still exists. It still exists. I think Dolly uh, Dolly has a Pirates. I went to hers. Um, and then So medieval times still yes, exists. Still does. I don't know if King Arthur's Feast does. That was its competitor. My dad... Not a, not a big fan of the King Arthur's Feast. Isn't there like a Renaissance one or like a, just a horse one? That's well, there in- well there was one here in town called Arabian Nights. Arabian that's Nights gone. Area. That's the okay. one that I was a part of. <laughs> yeah, 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 where yeah, yeah. me? That's the reason why we do business. Me together. and our buddy Wayne. Wayne works at a Universal. He's yeah, a, yeah. he's a super uh, funny actor and comedian. And Wayne played the the crazy genie who was up to his hijinks, who would get a volunteer from the audience to come out. And then they'd, they'd lift me with a rope off of a horse. And when they lifted me off the horse, I had a pair of pants that were like pre-split. Mm. So when they pulled the rope, my pants went bang! And then my butt <laughs> uh, blew out of the pants. Well, and you, then I was laughing. You're wearing like heart boxers. Yeah, they like, put novelty like heart boxers on me. And then my pants went f- exploding. And then everybody was like, ah, boo. You know, like, Why'd you agree to do that, drunk? by the way? What? Why'd you agree to do that? When you work in back radio, then, Tom, when you work in radio. Yeah, but you were a cool dude back then. Yeah, but that's know. 300, buddy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's an easy 300. You swing past the old uh, Arabian Nights. Yeah, yeah. You get in the harness. I think yeah. I can pay 500. That's when Bobby was working in promotions, and she got his time and a half. Uh, okay, I may have gotten yeah. 500 for that. You had an extra stunt fee? <laughs> no, no. No, it was like because I had to go off-site double days. Oh, yeah, and when you, yeah, I had yeah. to practice one day. You just swing by the day before, and then they cut your pants and show you what you're going to do. And then the day of the performance, I showed up, and then they gave me a sweet 500. I think anybody in our audience would blow their pants off in Arabian Nights <laughs> for $500. I remember I watched that video at UCF's computer lab. <laughs> <laughs> when I, was in, nice. I was in there taking a test. And, and you're I was watching like, your future boss. Yeah, but then, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Adam Z, I'm like, look at him blow his pants off. I'm like, I'll do business with that man one day. <laughs> well, I'm going to marry that man. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. All right, we'll see you next week. All right, we did it. Now, this, I got to save it really fast in case it falls on time. Because we spent the now, then I'll remind you Where about the. Go? That's going to be um, Friday, April. Working hard, working hard. So with Shaggy, we're going to have to do Tuesday 1 and 2. So we'll do the interview, and then we'll just finish it off. I uh, know it's long. And i got to edit that Tuesday. Yeah, the other one. I'll, uh, because I have one at 11 minute. The Tuesday 4 had the 11 minute. And then was the this one has an edit at the 26 minute. Yes, so this yeah, is yeah. Friday. Friday. So I'll help you when, uh, when we're plus done with the interview. Two, I'll sit here and make sure that the. the 4, 26, 24. I got it now. There. Yeah. Cause and it was two the, shits on Tuesday 4. I got that one. Yeah. Greg said shit twice. Oh, good. And then what? And then we'll do Shaggy. Will be what? Uh, Tuesday one. How Tonight long? Tonight one. How long? Well, we'll we'll just uh, end it when we think it has to be ended, and then we'll just keep going with. Um, Hold on. 
so many chicks. Here they come, dog. One, come. Where'd it go? Okay, and then. All right. <coughs> Oh no, TC, yeah. Fashinio in our chat room said uh, when he told his brother-in-law about the pants splitting part being fake, they made him mad. A lot of people didn't know that was uh, was fake, <laughs> including yours truly, who did it. Like I honestly did not know. Oh, Don Felder said he liked talking to us. That's always nice. Oh, good. You're in here. I can do it, too. Did you hear what I said? Don enjoyed it. It's always nice when they text back. And this is a call, right? Yes. Tuesday. Yeah, this one I think will be quick too, if I had to guess. But we'll see. Uh, Billy said his publicist said that he should be calling soon. Okay. So they confirmed that. Yeah, we just uh, keyed up BDM. We, we probably crammed a, a lot into this one just because we were afraid of losing certain things, right? Um, Don Felder was one of those that, you know, we're not – huge Eagles fans, but it's kind of hard to not talk to somebody that instrumental to rock and roll. And we're not even massive, like, interview guys anymore, but yeah, we, we're trying to balance that. And then again, somebody from ICP, I mean, getting to talk to Shaggy from ICP, um, I don't think anybody would turn that down. Maybe. I don't know. I just think, personally, I think it's interesting because I don't know if a lot of people know this, and yes, I'm killing time. But um, Tom and I, we didn't use ICP, but we would talk a lot. Right around the time that I think Adam Carolla was the first person who had interviewed the, them, you told me, hey, you got to listen to this interview with the Insane Clown Posse. You were like, these guys have been busting their ass. And then I went, I listened to that, that um, interview, and I was like, that's the, and it was kind of an inspiration to, to, for us to be like, well, when we go out on our own, the only way we're going to be able to do this is if we do every part. Because there was some part in the interview where I think Violent J was talking about how they would load up a van. They had a shitty van that had like their name spray painted on it. And they would load up their van with all their promotional stuff and even like snacks. I think they had snacks and their tapes. And they would go to different areas that they knew kids would be and young people would be. And he'd, they'd sell snacks and they'd sell these tapes with them. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it started. Yeah. the the And then the rest is history. It seriously was that easy. Yeah. Meaning that hard. Their ability to build a super engaged audience base, a fan base, 
without mainstream media because mainstream They've never had it. Yeah, never. You know, and be pre internet and social media. I think you know that what is what makes it so so weird. So that's really the main. But then the know. the other thing, not to fan fanboy out, but they also were the type of guys that when that they could get their hands on like streaming and stuff. They were some of the first I've ever mm. seen to do it. Like they were doing like live streams on streaming channels like yeah, yeah. years and years ago. But you know, to build that following grassroots and uh, counterculture or whatever the hell you want to call, you know, like outside of anybody uh, big promoting you is super impressive. Um, you know, without any sort of big record labels more impressive. or production studios. It's or almost the most impressive. Corporations behind you, you know. Will this be the most famous rapper we'll ever talk to? Well, we talked Jelly Roll, and I think Jelly He's Roll. He's more famous now. Is yep. more famous now. Yep. He wasn't. Although, Insane Clown Posse, I feel like if you said that name. It's household. If you said My Shaggy mom, Too Dope. Too, no, okay, too, no, if you said Shaggy Too Dope, nobody would know. But, Violent but, J, people go, ah, maybe. No, well, which would be more recognizable, Shaggy Too Dope or Jelly Roll? Jelly Roll. It, in all of society? Yeah, I think so. He's that big now. Well, because the oh, he's, the he's country American music Idol awards. now. He's on American Idol now. It's like you can't even fight that. He's in mainstream commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll have a deal with somebody huge. Well, he'll be like the new Pizza Hut guy or something. Like you'll see it. That wasn't a joke either. I was just trying to think of like Craig Robinson doing something like that. And he's winning every award. Uh -huh. Hello, Tom and Dan. Hey, how you doing? Uh, yep. Yep. Sure. Uh, Looks like it's a reschedule, 2 p.m. tomorrow is what I'm hearing. See, it's funny because now you guys get to see what Sam was doing behind the scenes. This is the same shit I would do with uh, Ed Till or anybody else, like when you're booking these things. Sometimes it's not even their fault. Sometimes it's like the record label or the venue will pull you away, and then we get, we get dumped down to a lower tier, especially if they put podcast on there, and I think it says that, so kind of interesting how it plays like if something bigger happens you'll forever get bumped so it's kind of interesting you guys get to see it now yeah tom's in there like real time scheduling with shaggy two dope on the phone i think it's kind of cool you guys get to see this or it could be his manager i don't know it sounds like a rough voice though yeah, like what's funny is, and I don't even blame them. Like imagine if somebody came in here and we were talking to, no offense, we were talking to EJ or Kenny or one of our friends, right? These are buddies that we care about. But then like we had like fucking Jelly Roll rock, walk in. Then we'd have to be like, hey, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> like we gotta. All right, so we're going to pivot. Uh, he's going to call on a two tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. Um, Do you want to take that Friday and just put it on tonight? Yes, and then yes, Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I figured. Yeah, so what we, we just did. We can do did, something else, though, if you want to. No, I figure what we'll do is we'll put Don Felder and uh, Dustin and Greg as Tuesday one and two, and then that Friday we just did as three and four. Um, so as long as I edit the 11-minute shits from Greg, and the Friday 26 minute shit, then we're good. Yes. And we didn't, we said uh, welcome back at the beginning of the Don that. Felder. I can so cut that. we could say welcome to a corporate time yeah. with Tom So we'll do that in the intro. If you do give me a welcome to, I'll yeah. pump that out. And then we'll do our intro. And then we'll These be done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll. Uh, All right. Let's do an intro then for tonight. Uh, yeah, if you could, Tracy. Tracy said, should I move it in the the event calendar to 2 p.m.? Yeah, that would, Tracy, that would be rad if you could do that. Thank you. 
He just said he's super behind. He's like, we wouldn't be able to do it. It's just like you said. Yeah. He's, he's just calling I knew it. place after place after place. I knew place. it. I feel bad for him. There, this is torture for people, dude. And he's going to be- It's the 12-minute Rockville interview. It's He's probably been sitting yeah. there all since 9 a.m. Yeah, doing the same shit, answering the same questions. It's stupid. You should just tell him, you know what? Fuck it. Send us a handwritten letter and we'll read it. In the show. <laughs> All right, let's do it. No, intro. no, no, it's fine. That's how that, that's the price you pay for being it a celebrity. It is the price you pay. But you get like, there, you talk to us, you sound interesting. <laughs> but it's uh, all fake because you know the answer guy. the same question. How did he sound? He sounds sad, right? In in the weeds, he's like, "Oh shit, man." <laughs> it wasn't. It was his. Uh, oh, like whoever manager. was had a rough voice though, too. Yeah, yeah. All those guys talk like this. Well, it's Juggalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> Juggalo. Well, if the guy was like, uh, like Business super Juggalo. proper, I wouldn't even like it. No, no, no. Yeah. So this is Don Felder, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is Don Felder, and after that we did Dustin and Greg. <laughs> and then we did. I wish I called him Don Feldman. <laughs> this is Corey Feldman's good. dad, Don Feldman. <laughs> I got some. Hey, remember when we talked to Don Felder today? It's Eagles, not. The Eagles. Okay. It's just oh, Eagles. Go. Well, if I said the Eagles, he'll mm-hmm. get it. It's the same yeah. thing. I'm going to yell at you. <laughs> that. Eagles, no, the no, Eagles. It's, it's Eagles. Uh, what about a Eagle? All right. So it's Don and. and oh, yeah. yeah and then after this. Thing. Okay. Hold on. Uh, you, yeah, and you started it, so I'm going to kill me. Here, give me one of those. Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I'm Dan. Turn my fucking mic off like an idiot. All right, and now I'll do Black God, and we should be good, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad we made this complicated. <laughs> <laughs> There's like 25 different pieces. <laughs> and then you got to change it. And the shit's out. And then why do we do. even say that, like, like, I love how we're like, we'll just edit the curses out of the show. It's fine. <laughs> it won't slow us down at all. <laughs> That's what I need AI to do. All right. right. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with us today. That was a weird one. Yeah. That was a weird one. Tomorrow, Tiffany's coming in studio. Oh, yeah. uh, From Salty Sisters. Uh, We may have Shaggy (laughs) Too Dope. Uh, Who else is coming? Someone's coming in the beginning. We got uh, Tiffany Two Tits. Uh, Come on. She's got kids. Why would you say that?